Can you get James in there? That's what I want. Just like a little bit of me and just both of us somehow. What's your name, folks? Keith. Keith. Yep. Keith. Keith Rissy. You just live over the hill or what? Uh, raised over the hill. Oh, I live in town. Oh, which town? Martin, 30 miles. Oh, I see. Yeah. <clears throat> Get you both in there? Yeah, it will, but I was working through the chicken. Chicken doesn't handle a whole lot. It should get working a lot better. Okay. Can see you and you can see as long as you can see Randy in there pretty good. Oh, we go it a little James. bit more towards him. There you go. Is James in there? You can hit live if you want, dude. Sean, you could hit live on. <clears throat> yep. I should have went down and got another little cup of coffee, but. You could, uh, you should, well, John could log in or go to Facebook and see if we're hot. If we're it looks that. legit. Mm -hmm. You should do that, John. John, what these dudes do? Man, you got a real, <coughs> real water bottle. <coughs> I try to. I try to. Oh, well, that would suck. <laughs> hey, just make sure that you're not pulling that hard because it, this is short. Unless you just want one of those other black ones. Are you going in on your Instagram? Or? Yep, I've, I've been. It's oh. been for probably, I don't know, five, five minutes. I just turned it on just to let guys go. No, no, it's not that. It's this one. There we go. Okay. John, if you want to say something, you have to tell me because then I'll unmute you. Because, and you just, ha like I said, however, if it gets, you get, pull it if you want to get closer or further, however you want to do it. Perfect. One, two, how's that? That's perfect. All right. Yep, and you'll be able to hear yourself as long as you're, I have it so that it won't spike out, but the 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 louder that you are, the, the better, I think. 130 people watching or whatever. Hmm? 130 people 130. That's pretty good. Oh, that's yeah. pretty good. That's really good. Oh, yeah. It's over, it's over my head. I haven't done this Facebook Live only one time. Oh, oh. so... This Sean. is, it's like this, you can't, you, that's what they mean, it record, it's recording it, you can't, but if everybody watching this is smart enough to know they can just rotate lock their phone. Are you sure? Yeah. And then it don't matter. Oh, uh, you better tell them that. <laughs> I didn't know rotate that. Rotate lock your phone and then turn it sideways. Show them, show them on there, show them on his, go, you should go up there and show them how to do it, dude. What about on a computer? If they're watching on a computer, it's going to be like this too, probably. Then what you do is this. <laughs> if we go straight up, if there's just not enough room to get us both in there. Yeah, if you want, I can go straight up and turn it on you. No, no, no. That might have to flip over and eventually. Do it. Do it. Because. He doesn't know. Jeez. Gotta be cool. Gotta be cool like all the high school basketball kids do. These are, these, these are, if you listen to music, these are so clear. Well, who makes those? Beats. They're like almost like bows. You've yeah. heard of bows? Yeah, speaker. I've got bows. Yeah, just so crystal clear like that. <clears throat> so we got um, everything that we pretty much have set up. All, you, you've got a good layout. So what we'll do is, as soon as Keith comes back, I'll, I'll, I could get started right now, but okay, I'll just wait. Yeah, 
That won't. It's such a long cord. It won't. <laughs> test, test. Is it, can you hear yourself good enough in your, in your. Yeah, real good. I could yeah. turn it up a little bit if you see it. No, it's, it's loud. Okay, you're it's good. It's good where it was. Okay. I ain't okay. quite that deep. Okay. I know. I mean, we, we, <clears throat> I'm not there yet. <laughs> or they they want it to go no, the other way? No, no. There's I think they're instructing people watching. Oh. 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 I just don't want to be the only one on here. I want James. No, you can see you can see a little bit of me in the corner oh. and you so we could see, that's about as probably about as good as we're going to get it. That's oh. pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll need a little more of you though. Maker, just a little more. Lean forward. There we go. I'll go like there, this. There we go. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> All right. So I'm gonna. Here's what I'll do. I'm gonna. Sh I'm gonna put mute and mute. So you guys can't. I can't hear your microphones at all. No matter what you do. As soon as I get the intro done, then uh, we already have your. I'll kind of explain to it real quick, and then we'll get into the questions, and we'll start just flowing through it. Plain and simple. Okay. Everybody's ready? Uh, my record's going, the record's on that. Let me just check this real quick. Record's hot on that. That's good. All right. What's up, guys? You're here with O'Neill Ops, and this is the Predator Hunter Podcast. This is a place where we break it down, going into detail with the equipment that we use and how we use that equipment application specific. Once again, it's our goal to get guys, SMEs, subject matter experts, guys that know more about particular subjects than we do, to get you guys as much information as we possibly can regarding tools, tactics, training, techniques to help you become better at what you do. And once again, we have uh, an awesome special guest, which I would classify in the, the realm of one of the legends in our sport. The way that I look at it is my generation, this is one of the guys that I grew up watching. This is one of the guys that uh, is very respected out there. He taught us, guys like me, whether he knows it or not, a lot about the the game of predator hunting just by watching him um learning all of the stuff that he does the tools that he uses and today you guys are going to be very fortunate to be able to get as much detailed info from him as you can possibly get so today we have randy anderson 99.99 percent of guys that follow us already know who he is and we're gonna we're gonna pick his brain we talked at the, before we got started with this uh, podcast we played your song called come little coyote come and you you can before we get into the details on on kind of uh how you got started let's just brief us a little bit on that song Talk, talk to us a little bit about that song before we get started. Because when I put that in on the YouTube video, I'll put that at the beginning, right right now. Okay. Well, I'd I done that video. We'll get into how that started, which is pretty interesting too. <laughs> but uh, um, my neighbor, from he's about a mile and a half away, old Glenn Zink, neighbor in Nebraska. He's on about every, every video, especially the first one. And my first video was just right around home. The mains hadn't really hit. So when the main hitch, mains really got bad, I had to start traveling. We didn't have any coyotes. What, what year would that have been, did you uh, say? Well, I started filming in 93. 
And uh, then this was, uh, the video come out in 99, because I never knew I'd ever make a video. I was just doing it for the fun of it. But then finally, in about 99, I had about everything done, and Glenn said, man, you ought to write a song for your video. I said, well, I don't know. I had some music talent. I could play. I was a music teacher for a few years in high school and stuff. So I, uh, so I start. we were hunting, and I was writing some lines down on a sheet of paper, and I was trying to come up with a tune Kind of like the Sons of the Pioneers before your time. See it tumbling down. Na, na, na. Come, little coyote, come. So I wrote the song like that, and the next morning I could not remember that tune. <laughs> so the, the tune's a completely different tune that I just made up. And then Glenn, he got a line in there about it was a sin when the coyote come in downwind. That was his line. And uh, But anyway, so, so I uh, <clears throat> had the video done. And I told the, I had it done by Dakota Video and Post in Sioux Falls. They had done some of, uh, um, oh, Joe Foss. Remember Joe yeah, Foss? Yeah, I've, I've heard that. I've no, heard. they had wildlife videos and stuff. And he used to edit his and everything. I asked around. I don't know how to edit, you know. And, and so he, uh, they did it for me. And they got a cut for a couple of years. They helped me. And um, so anyways, I told him I had this song. And I, I recorded it. <laughs> it was a. Flood music. There used to be one in Sioux Falls and one in Sioux City, Iowa. And uh, so I went there in Sioux City, and he said, yeah, we know an old guy, old hippie down in his basement. He's got a recording studio. He'd be cheap. So <laughs> I went down there, and I, I played the <clears throat> acoustic and sang the tune. Then I think I added bass or drums and then bass and then uh, lead guitar. And then I, I, I sung harmony with myself, and I played the coyote calls on there. And then, you know, they had a whole bunch of tracks. So then he just put it all together, probably a tube outfit of some kind, you know, nothing digital. And we come up with that. So I took it back to Falls. You know, I told him, I got this song. Could we put on her? Well, I don't know. I guess we could see what it sounds like. He about fell over when he, when he heard it. He couldn't believe it. And uh, Come Little Coyote. And then that artist, Tim Davis, he's on, you yep. know, you've heard of him. Yep. He's on Predator... Uh, Predator Masters. Or Predator Extreme magazine. He yep. does cartoons. Yep. Usually almost every issue anymore. But he did this cartoon. I forgot to bring it. But maybe I can email it to you, take a picture, and you can get it on there. But it shows a coyote, a uh, uh, dad coyote and mom. Had, he had a little sleeping hat on, stuff there in bed. And middle of the night, and the old coyote goes, Honey, I just can't sleep. That tune, Come Little Coyote, won't get out of my head. <laughs> you know, and it's pretty funny. But, but that's kind of how it started. Played that song and then it worked out good for that video and Primos and we've used it for kind of a theme song on a lot of my videos. I'm sure a lot of them have heard it, and uh, so that's kind of how that worked. That that's pretty elaborate. The whole process of actually getting right. So you played the instruments, yeah, in the, played and, the instruments. and the vocals, yeah, and the harmonies. Yeah, so called. pretty much everything. Everything it's on there. That's pretty. Me. I had I didn't have any idea. I've heard it before, but I didn't know that. Only song I ever wrote. Only time I ever did it. Oh. That's really cool. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> I, I I went to, it was in Valentine probably. When you had a, a seminar in Valentine, it was, oh gosh, it had to be three or four or five years ago now. So it kind of... It was like a wild benefit game. Benefit thing, yeah. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. You were there. And I didn't know that you actually did, uh, it, it was really entertaining. Yeah, I seminars. Didn't, yeah. yeah, I didn't know that you did that. Yeah. I, I knew you, I mean, obviously we I knew you had you have your calls watched you on TV, DVDs, right? but I didn't know that you did. did is that something that you did? Well, uh, yeah, I did. It. Well, I started going to first show. We're kind of getting ahead, but that's fine. Yeah. I, I started out uh, at a Gregory, South Dakota, had their for a deer classic, and the chiropractor tried it. It only worked one year. I don't know. Just, but Beverly would bring their, their deer heads in and everything, and I was there, and I was just working on the video, and I had a sheet of paper like this, didn't have it edited or nothing, and I was showing some of the footage on the TV. It just took the place over. People just couldn't believe it. From your I, coyote hunts. Yeah, and I was shooting them with a 300 Weatherby Magnum. Because oh, I, <laughs> I was going to go elk hunting for the first time rifle hunting. Yeah. Well, if I could hit a coyote, I should be able to hit yeah, a, an elk. Should yeah. hit an elk. And then, so I said, well, I'll charge $25. You want to pay now $25 for the video. So they'd write their name down and, I'll, and, and make it 30 because I'll need five bucks to send it to you. And that was just filling pages up, you know. And then I did a seminar there, and uh, that's kind of where it started. Then I did one at the fairgrounds in Valentine. 
Rapid City, uh, Watertown has a big, big gun show, and that's kind of where I started. Uh, did so were these seminars that you were going to and in, in, in doing those little presentations were those already assembled things? Like were they already like a gun show? Were, was it a yeah? Gun it was sh- regular gun shows. Yeah, regular gun shows. These were the and one then Mountain, and like the one in Watertown. I went to that one, only went for a Saturday. And they said, oh, they're always three, you know, your table's like 20 bucks or 15, you know. And, but they heard I was going to have a TV. They didn't, they want a gun show, it's supposed to be quiet, you know. So they put me in the foyer where they come in, yeah. just clogging the whole thing up. They had to keep, keep, keep people moving, you know. Yeah. And I sold tally hoes. I was doing the same thing there. Never had a video yet. All these shows I was going to, and they just add on, I'll send them to you. Well, we don't just, yeah, whenever. And I was advertising, you can get, They'll shoot them with a rifle, shotgun, muzzle loader, pistol, bow and arrow. And I didn't even have bow and arrow done. You know, that's like the worst, the hardest to do. <laughs> I didn't have it done yet. People, yeah, put them bow and arrow, and they put it down. You know, <laughs> pressure was on. And and I remember I, I was there seven hours doing this, and I sold a tally hose from Tal Lockwood for five bucks. They cost me two fifty, and I'm come out of there with over five thousand dollars. <laughs> so. So I started doing. Then I worked. <laughs> then how, I, <laughs> how long ago was that? Oh, that would have been. This was before. 90, before everything. That'd be ninety-eight. I've right before I come out with the video. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. had no idea. Oh yeah. Then I go. To, we can get. I just started going to Deer Classic, like the Iowa Deer Classic, the yeah. Wisconsin. Forty thousand people coming through there. They're like oh, this geez. on Saturday, and they'd look over there, and they were just clogging the the aisles up. Yeah. Was, I couldn't believe it. What do we need to do this? The coyotes would be dropping right and left, fur flying, you know, and and they, and so they'd toss out a hunter. Just give me what I need. Well, you'll probably need a, this and that and whatever. And then they put it in their sack and just go on down the <laughs> Denver, uh, Columbia, Missouri, all the Iowa Deer Classic, Des Moines. Then it got so later. I was doing. They would actually. I was the manager. What is? Who is this guy? You know. And we need. Was this to just, all by yourself? Nobody else. Yeah. No. Yeah. The wife come a couple times, but she got tired of it. You know. <laughs> every show is the same old thing, and uh, she liked the, the the what do you call that popcorn? Uh, yeah. Coated one, whatever. Yeah, the caramel. Yeah, she go through quite. No, whatever. I can't think of it. No, candy corn. That. No. What do they call that? Anyways. Uh, Cotton candy and jerky. She no. <laughs> okay, I'm I, stopping. I yeah, you. Yeah, but anyway, so no, I was by myself, and it was just I drive all the way home with a Mountain Dew and sunflower seeds. I could just go forever on that, and they drive all the way home, Denver. Yeah. So, so, so how many pre-orders did you have before you even made a video? Oh, I, mean, I don't know. I don't know. Just pages. Just pages. Yeah, pages. So you were just writing it down on paper. Yeah, and I never had them. Would sold. they request what you, what they wanted to see on the video then? No. I okay. Did. I just told them. Well, okay. let's see this and that, and then, of course, my first one was just all these guys that we never had any sponsors. They're wearing Carhartt coveralls with a like Glenn's Inc. One time I was wearing some, and his crotch was out. And I zoomed in on it, walking out to get a coyote, and <laughs> just stuff like yeah. that. You know, yeah. people just like just, it. It was just yeah. real. Just yeah, just yeah. real, just real. And exactly. I'll say this right now. You know, I'm nothing that special. I mean, the calling wise and everything. I mean, I am not, you guys probably take my calls and sound better than I do. I mean, I don't claim to be any call champion or anything. I just, I just took the camera hunting. That's what would I did. Would you film I yourself just, or would, did you have a camera guy? No, I always was just, I never had a camera Self-film. Guy. Just yep. self-film and I'd sell them calls because I'd turn around and you'd look up my nostrils and blow yeah. that hot dog yeah. or that whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. would yeah. sell the calls, you know, and, and so, uh, but I don't claim to be anything special. I just hit it at the right time. Um, you know, there was, I think Tom Miranda, yeah, yeah. uh, and then if you had the old predator trapper, Jerry Blair, uh, Crowsley publications, I think Jerry Blair, Johnny Stewart, may have been Gerald Stewart. Johnny. Uh, there was a few of them guys They had a video and Tom Miranda, I think had one, but it wasn't much calling and shooting. There might've done a couple, three. There's, I think they were afraid of antis and yeah. everything to yep. put a downer on the sport. Yeah. That didn't stop me though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, that's what, but, uh, yeah. so then that's, I just thought, well, wouldn't it be neat to just, but I, you know, I didn't, didn't know I was going to actually do it. I just was out for fun, you know, with filming and stuff. So, but, uh, that's kind of, you know, what happened. And then, uh, that is, so that's how, I mean, that's, that's legit. Interesting. That's well, crazy. To well, me. the crazy the, thing, you know, when I finally got it, I put it all together, and I still had enough for the video. Everything I said was in there. You know, and I was the one that kind of started the barking, I think, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Bark to stop the coyote and howl. Yeah. You know, I was doing that because I yeah. said on the video, call with my voice, which I was 
you know, mainly out. And I do the wolf howl. When they don't stop the roof, roof, and I go, woo, just hold it out forever. Yeah. Finally, what? No, you know. Yeah. And, and I do a whistle. Like if they just walk up, sometimes they just barely walk. You go to shoot. Whoop, they took a step and hit it in the back. And I always go, just enough to hold them there, you know. Yeah. Yep. Just stuff like that was in there. And I, you know, when it, it, I did it. But the thing, I guess we're kind of getting ahead what I was going to do. But anyways, uh, the, re, the, the way I got noticed uh, how, how did you, how did start? Let's go. Okay. The, you, so is that, would you say that's how you got started? How did you get calling? St- yes. Calling. How, how did you get st- yeah. started? Okay. In- we'll come back to what got me actually in the limelight with the video. Yes. Um, yeah. I was in the sixth grade, 1966. And, uh, I, at our church, I had six hundred uncles on the Anderson side. Where, where's your location? Butte, Nebraska. At, okay. Right south of Bone Steel, South Dakota. Yeah. Just right across Fairfax, Drake Reed, you know, that area. Yeah. Pickstown, Fort Randall Dam, yeah. just not too far. And uh, I had six uncles, and two of them hunted. And they were, uh, uh, they liked deer hunting and pheasant hunting, but they really liked reloading. I was getting interested. In, they, they go down in their basements. I thought it was really cool. And they liked prairie dog hunting. They come up here prairie dog hunting. So... After church, and the one uh, one uncle was our pastor, Vance Anderson, and I, he, I'd uh, go sit by them guys every once in a while and hear some hunting stories. Him and Doc, they called him, or Cressel, and uh, they'd start telling stories. Well, Vance finally, he said, you know, you remember the, you probably remember Herders, uh, was it the Herders magazine out of uh, Mitchell, South Dakota? Yeah, it was a magazine, and uh, they had stuff, you know, hunting stuff and all kinds of shells and whatever you could buy. But he'd seen where he could get a call to call in a coyote. It sounded like a rabbit. And they sent actually a little, it had been a 45 record. It wasn't tapes. It was back then, it was a record. And you had to put it on a record player. And that showed you how to, uh, what to sound like. And I think, I can't remember if somebody just blowing a call if it was a real rabbit they were putting the pliers to or whatever. But, <laughs> but anyways, they, uh, so he, he listened to that. So he took it out. I knew right where he was. And he went out and sat on a hill by the Niagara uh, River where he deer hunt right before dark. And I'll, and I'll never forget, he goes, you know, I blew that call for about 45 seconds, and here comes seven coyotes, two from this way, two from that way, and three from that way on the run right at me. And he says, I had to shoot my way out of there, and I never hit a one of them. You know, and I thought, that's about the coolest thing. So I wanted to try it. Well, you ain't got a gun big enough. You know? it, it, and you, it, that time you were about how old? I was sixth grade. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So 1966, whatever. So as I'm 60, I'll be 67 here pretty soon. And you look like you're 57. Well, <laughs> well you got to work out, you know. Yeah. You were, we were downstairs. Yeah, we pumped it up for you. Come up you guys should have seen it before we started this yeah, podcast. Yeah, I should see. Yeah. Okay. Showered up. Now I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so I took that call and I went, I knew a guy at the gas station, Herman Schrotland. He had a little back room. I always wondered what was back there. He goes, yeah, you're going to call coyotes? I said, well, 22, kill one. Nah, here, let me show you. So he took me in the back, and he gave me a 30-30 lever action. No scope, of course. So I took that out there, and here's my very first set. Uh, I, it's actually where I actually lived, you folks, on the, watch my videos. I made most of them down on the Kippahaw River, west of Butte, a little ways. And it was actually my, where my friend lived, my, one of my best friends in high school, and they milked cows and everything. He didn't hunt. Can I go home with you? And, I'll, and the river was froze and everything. Can I go home with you and uh, try to call him a coyote? I don't care. He said, well, that's stupid. Why would you want to do that? You know, <laughs> he's got to work. So I went <laughs> for dark, went out behind the trees. It was cold. It was just fresh snow. I stood in front of a tree, a hardwood tree on the edge. You know how the trees come off a, off a river. And I got up on top there. And the draws were sideways, you know, like coming in perpendicular. And uh, I blew it for, again, like 45 seconds or so. And I think it's an old call. An old or a... Uh, a scotch it might have been back in them days, just a, a metal reed with a body. And I looked up, and I, like I said, snow is just fresh. And I seen a speck moving out there probably over a quarter of a mile. Then it disappeared. Then it would be bigger. Then it disappeared. All them draws. And I never, ever blew it again. And I'm sat, standing by the tree, and it comes up to big old coyote, big old male. And he comes up there, and he turns broadside about 10 yards and I had the gun on, boom, and I blew a hole on the other side about like that, and they were worth like 100 bucks back then probably. I don't know. Maybe not quite then. But, but anyways, 
he, I'll never forget it. He fell over and he tensed all up and just blew the scours all over the snow. Just pooped all over. Just, and then he relaxed. I'm standing there and he tensed up again and just blew a whole bunch more on the snow. And that's what got me started. So <laughs> that was the start. That's an interesting start. <laughs> that's something you don't forget right there. <laughs> yeah. So then I, uh, so then I started Never going. Never happened again. Yeah. And then, uh, I kind of got a few notes. I don't want to miss anybody. I can't probably get to everybody, but uh, you can if you want. We oh, got we got the. Okay. But anyways, uh, Gary Hausman, he he saw my videos. A lot of you know him, but he was my age. But he didn't join up, didn't come to Butte to school till the sixth grade. He was just across the border, six miles Fairfax is where he was going to school. But but he actually lived in Nebraska, but he was going there. Well, he joined. He started coming to Butte. So we started going, and then, uh, so we'd set up, and then about that time, you know, that magazine, uh, Trapper Predator, those a Tally Ho come out. So we thought it was open read, you know, and you could yep. vary your pitch, and yep. I had a musical yep. ear. Gary kind of did, too. He played bass guitar and yep. stuff, had a little band. So we, you know, we kept messing around, and then, uh, so we kind of liked it, so we'd go back and forth between a metal read and, a, and an open read. Oh, for all, kind of through high school and everything. Then we got, got into college, um, I went to Wayne State Teachers College, and Gary went to be a veterinarian down in uh, Kansas. So we were kind of apart for a while. But he told me, do you look at your trapper predator? There's a, a howler in there. Bill Austin makes a, an Austin howler, just a PVC pipe with a reed on it, and castration bands hold the reed on, you know. And no, I said, yeah. And so he actually, I think he gave me one that he had. So I was experimenting around with it, and I went out on the roads at night just to try it. I remember, you know, them coyotes would answer, you know, and, you know, every time. And, and actually, uh, I was doing it pretty dark, one pretty dark night, and I was mimicking them when they'd howl, I'd howl back. I heard the snow crackling. Here come two coyotes right through the fence in a county road ditch and stopped in a ditch and looked at me and then took off. So then here is what it reminded me of when I was about that time, back when I was in the sixth, seventh grade, uh, my dad had heavy equipment. Uh, earth moving equipment, you know, dozers, scrapers, build dams, you know, like he got around here and did a lot of agriculture work. But my job back then was, well, he would grease first thing in the morning. I'd pump the diesel fuel in the, the caterpillar and the dozer and whatever. Didn't have electric pumps then. But a lot of times you'd hear a coyote howl, you know. So I go, you know, I just howl back up, not thinking of it. Well, one time I howled, and there's a coyote comes running right up on the hill right by the machines looking, where'd that come, you know. So, that, so when I got this howler in, in college, that reminded me of that. Well, I wonder if they'd come in now, you know. So then, the same time I was going to Wayne State and Gary was down in Kansas, I had to take a P class. Well, you could, about every two weeks, you'd switch. You like, could take bowling, dance, you could take golf, softball, bat, you know. But they had archery. So I go, well, that'd be kind of something different. So I, I tried archery, me and a buddy, and then found out in Nebraska you could actually shoot a deer with a bow. So I thought, well, I'd be kind of I mean. I never really deer hunted because it's so stinking easy, you know, a deer compared to a coyote just walking around, shoot me yeah, now. Exactly. You know, whatever, exactly. You know. <laughs> so so I well, that might be a little challenge. Well, I got hooked on it. And I just in Nebraska you could shoot two bucks. And so I'd always usually shoot just anything, you know, and then I'd hold out for the big one that would never come. So I was <laughs> but I wasn't calling as much. Well, Gary had other buddies and stuff. They were hitting all of our spot, all my spots and stuff before I would get to them. And so, like, finally I'd hold out in January, finally put the bow away. So I'd go out there, and the coyotes were talking back at me, just blowing a rabbit call, you know. And they were hanging up, sitting on the rear ends and leaving. And what in the world? Them guys, what are they doing? So then I thought, well, I wonder if I'd howl. So then I took that Oscar Howler out that I was blowing on the roads because there was other companies uh, that were making howls about the same time, but they made them like Burnham Brothers, I think, maybe uh, the uh, Johnny Stewart and some of them, Loman maybe. But they had these great big funnels. I don't know if you've seen them, yep, you know. Yep. Yeah. And and so, but they made them to locate. Yeah. And uh, but Bill Austin, you know, I talked to him a couple times, and he had passed away not too long after. You know, I, I kind of knew him, but. Uh, He'd actually name some howls, like challenge howl female, and stuff like that. So I kind of used some of that, got to learn that by listening to, ha to coyotes howl and everything. Um, <clears throat> so, I, so I basically, I, you could, I just did the three little howls that I started with, three or four, or 
heard is long old like siren. Siren, you know, because that's how they locate. Yep. Bill, you know, he turns the siren on. Austin, mainly he called and with and to get the dogs involved. And he'd put the dogs out in the spring and chase them, you know. He did some real calling, but a lot of it was challenge howls and just to get the cats so we knew where they were. Then he'd go put getters out or trap him and stuff too. But he did, you know, he did calling too, but mainly it was to, for that reason. But so, uh, so I started doing that, and that's just made a hundred percent difference. I would howl, that's all I would do, through, and I'd set her a little bit. If they didn't answer, I'd go to the tally ho or the scotch, whatever one I had, for, and I'd bury them back and forth. And pretty soon here'd come a coyote, you know, just like I thought, well, he's thinking, being uh, there's a coyote there, he heard it howl. So now he thinks that coyote's got a rabbit. Yep. And then, so that's what I did for quite a few years. And, and then uh, what I would also do, if they would, uh, you know, when I would howl and you'd be in some territory, well, then they'd do some challenging or domain howls or whatever. I would just mimic them, you know, just they go, rrr, rrr, rrr. I go, because I have a pretty good ear and I can just do it. And uh, I've done that a lot over the years. And so that's kind of where I got to actually learn. And now Bill had names for him. And if you listen, he does blow howlers, some of them a little different than I did and stuff. So I had my own twist on what Bill did. And so, and I even, when Bill passed away, something happened to his seminar tapes and Paula Austin, his wife had me redo them for him, but I tried to do them just like Bill did them, you know, so you can still get them. You wonder, how come that's Randy? Well, that's what happened. But so that's kind of, you know, what I did and uh, just kept learning. And then Gary, he come and we actually, in them days, we did way more challenge howls, you know, I mean, we Especially if they'd howl back, we'd challenge them right off the bat, and we never even get to the rabbit, you know. Just, really? Yeah, they just, you know, and, you know, I'll just jump ahead. But most anybody anymore, they're in such a hurry. Yeah. They just do not, especially as cats get educated, they don't give them time. Yep. Even the guys I'm with when I'm filming and stuff, they start, <laughs> there's a couple. One guy starts yawning. <laughs> you know, and I go, well, he thinks I'm about ready to quit, you know, so I guess. And another guy, he actually starts taking the shells out of his gun. Oh, jeez. <laughs> After that. how long? I mean, guys, you know, they're, I mean, it's funny. Yeah, they mean, oh, I don't know. They're just thinking, well, yeah, let's go somewhere else. And shoot, if I'm there by myself, I'd be staying, you know. But How long would you stay? Oh, it just depends. Yeah. Yeah, it just, I've stayed an hour and a half if I yeah. know they're there. I was, yeah. I'd never be any... Coyote yeah. call, uh, I wasn't be any good in a coyote calling contest. We were this. So yeah. I can't leave. I got to get yeah. them suckers. Yeah. We, we yeah. I did a podcast with some fellas from Missouri about a week ago, and <clears> I kind of probably shouldn't have said some stuff. I, it, I didn't mean it in a bad way, <clears> but I told them, I'm like, Ki contests wreck more damn coyotes than anything, <laughs> which I'm not going to bad mouth. You know, it, everybody to each his own. But you get ranchers around here that are like, hey, you guys, we need you to come in and maybe help out a little bit. And we're like, well, have you let anybody hunt? Yeah. Like, well, just these all these contest hunters all year. And I'm like, well, you're kind of wasting our time doing that. Yeah. But then, there, then there's those that don't even believe a cow can be educated. Yeah. You just ain't good enough. Yeah, exactly. You got to do this. Yeah. You're not good enough. Yeah. That's a bunch of BS. You know, just BS. Yeah. Because. because Coyotes get so educated. We were just oh, talking about we, that the yeah, other night, we were so. just going through that. We're yeah. like, can, um, what other species is there yeah. that is that smart? It's the wily coyote. Yeah. Exactly. That's right. Yeah, I mean, I've got, I just know places. Uh, I've got some relation. Has a great big slough about a dairy. There's always coyotes in there, and if you don't, and the neighbors got land on the other side, and if you don't get there, it used to be you got to be there early October, late September. But now they call everybody's out thermal yeah. shooting them off. That's that, that I won't disagree with that. <laughs> yeah. We talk about that all the time. Yeah. That opened. That opened. That's our own dang uh, fault there. You, yeah. what we should ask you too, like like the the same thing. Uh, you know, you do you know Perry Shaw? And no, Perry. He's he owns that gun shop. In oh the yeah, 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 Perry. Yeah. He he was he he was saying something about Fox Pro. He you know how Fox Pro single handedly wrecked Coyote Colin, which I mean if you think about it. it Somebody like you completely understands the dynamics of calling a coyote in, period. Yeah. You know what needs to be done when you go in, you get it done, and you probably are, you, well, you're very successful at it. There's a whole generation, we give them a name, but we don't want to put that out there right now. They're skinny jean. They, they, they want information that they don't want to earn. They want to get information without earning it, so they get an electronic call, and they just start going through. Right. Especially if they're hung up. They're howling. They don't see them. Every sound on it. 
every sound on it. Yep. And and they're they just never shut it off. I mean, just let it run all the time. It's unbelievable. And then you got guys asking us how to but anyway, the electronic <laughs> call that changed, you know, yeah. how that changed that that made a lot of coyotes live longer. And see what I did. I'm kind of getting all mixed up on my notes. That's all right. But anyways, uh, when I got to going, uh, Fox Pro was their first caller come out. The first one that you could download on. Yeah. So I called them up and I got one just to prove the fact that I can blow a hand call on there and you can call coyotes just as good as with a real animal. Yeah. Everybody, oh, it's got to be real. So, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I put a tally ho on there, Austin. I still use them. On yeah. the al- on you still- recorded it and put it on that call? Yeah, yep. just recorded yep. it on a camera. Or, or I actually went to a little college in North Norfolk Tech, community college. Went in there and blew some calls. You know, it sounded a little better, but yeah, also yeah. just on my camera mic. So I put them on, and, and I, it's on uh, Calling Coyotes 2. That was a 2 D, uh, VHS deal. And uh, I sat on my shooting bench down there on the Kippaw River. And uh, so I, I would play the call, then I'd play it on the Fox Pro, exact same sound. Then I'd get old Glenn Zink. We'd go out there and we'd call a coyote up with the exact same thing, come right up to it and shoot it. So that's the reason I... I uh, bought a fox pro really an electronic because i still i mean love to hand call but i would say you know they they are loud now i mean they're louder and if a coyote can't hear it they're not coming sure. you know especially when it's windy yeah. but uh <clears throat> so then what happened people wanted <laughs> they wanted to know where can they get my sound well, i don't know I don't, I don't know and so finally i called fox pro or they called me i can't remember and we worked out a deal i was a dealer they called me an honorary dealer, honorary pro staffers or something. What, what so, time frame would you say this? Well, thing? that would have been early, mid, oh, like 2005, six, somewhere in there. Maybe. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And, okay. And, uh, and so, uh, well, lock, stock, and barrel, you know, in yep. Valentine, yep. a lot of you got their stuff. My stuff, oh, yeah. I just was mm-hmm. going huge until they finally yeah. couldn't Bummer. keep it going. But, uh, so, and, uh, what were I talking about? The, the, you, the, <laughs> the, 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 your sound on the Fox Pro. Oh, yeah. So it. then, yeah, Fo- so Fox Pro, I can't remember it was the dad or Mike Dillon. They said, well, why don't you just be a dealer and, you, and we'll work out a deal. They can't get your sounds unless they buy We'll put your sounds on one, on one of your callers, and then they can't get your sounds if they buy that caller from you. So that worked great. And yeah. I, was, I sold a lot of them. Yeah. You know, so was that, a was that a, a custom Fox Pro? I don't know. It was as just as far as the Randy Anderson. Yeah, well, I mean, no, just, they bought it for me. They had to, in order to get your sounds, they had to buy it from you. Yeah, the Vox Pro so didn't have my sounds. You, you okay. were funneling all the sales were being funneled to you. Anybody that wanted your sounds. Actually, they, I think I gave my coyote distress sound to them, and then they gave me this free caller. Okay, <laughs> that's what it was. So, okay, <laughs> but so anyway, that you know, and that's kind of went on for quite a while, and uh, yeah, it worked out great, and then uh, then. Of course, Primos. I got that's another story we go backtrack on, but but anyways, that. that's that's kind of how how it got to going in you know, with the electronic part. And, and that's it, that's the, the, that's what we were talking about though. To go back the 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 electronic calls, the ease of just not having to. You don't have to be an artist. Like how you can manipulate an open read call to get yeah. the the tone, the pitch that you want. Uh, who else can do that? I mean, you, you, this, yeah, there's I'm, not a whole lot of people out there that can do that. And period. Still, still, I don't care how fast your Fox bang or whatever yeah. you got, you can do it so much faster. Yeah. Yeah. Right you, here. Right. I carry, I carry right. a diaphragm in my cheek. Yep. Yeah. I'm I can play any call, whatever. And that stays right there. I'll move it over there. You, you know, you, or something. So you were know. your Primos calls out before the Fox pro stuff came along? Mm, your hand calls? Yeah, I think they were actually. I think they had just come out. Yeah. What would so. you say that time frame is? Well, when you're when you're, I, first... I got so many stories. <laughs> how I got with Primos and all this. We'll go. Let's go yeah, into some of them. Yeah. But like the the like we're saying the electronic deal, and then how you said the pull the the the, the thermal. That's it's crazy. Well, now guys are calling up. Oh, mad it's, at you it's, guys, like they're mad at me for showing everybody how to call. Yep. But they it, didn't care. They found out. But it was no, yeah. you don't tell nobody else. But you know? if you're pushing a yes. call, why wouldn't you tell them? Yeah, you know and it's totally. Different. But now they're saying they come in. There's too many guys thermal hunting now. We can't get it. It is. <laughs> we it say is. the same thing, and we it's <laughs> our own fault. It, it is yeah. like because and but the th- the, the, the the door is open and yeah. and and guys, I always say it. Guys that are educating coyotes at night, I think it's ten 
fold worse educating a coyote at night as opposed to during the day yeah, because oh, at yeah. night times they're it's time. always been that way yeah because even way back i would get golf guys you know of course in the east there's so many people house here house there yeah. dogs barking guys running chainsaws haul wife hollering time for supper you know <laughs> yes. every coyote here's all that then you got the bow hunters out there chinning up the trees and walking in and out you know and coyotes get you know they ain't gonna howl much there's just too much going on. Well, cuss never howl back. Well, I mean, you can still howl them in. They don't have to yeah, howl back. But, yeah. but yeah. you know, and that that always, you know, makes it tough that way too, you know, just. It, it's, it's the, the game's changing. It's, it's the game yeah. is just, it's completely, I, I don't, I, I'm not going to say that it's necessarily going in a, in a good way. I just tell you what, I know the answer. Just got to get better at it. Yeah. Yeah. Got to get yeah. better. If if you that's the that's what it, it the, they're they're making the game. If you have the money to spend, they're making the game easier for you to be successful, and that's not good. I mean, if if you if you want to spend six grand and get a thermal, you're probably going to kill more coyotes than if you don't have a thermal because you can go out at night. But it doesn't mean that it, it, it's it does it's not making the sport any better. You're getting more people it's into it. It's not making it. that person any better. It's exactly, it's definitely not making that person yeah. any better. Cause I was getting to like them guys from out East, they'd say, well, we can call them in at night. That's back when you use the blue light, yep. the yellow, you know, but yep. how many are they educating? Yeah. We can't call in of the day. This is how we're, you know, and it was yeah. the same thing yeah. even way back then. Yeah. I did some calling that night. We tried the lights. Yeah. Same thing. Well, geez, we're screwing it up. Let's just sit out here with a shotgun in a full moon, mm-hmm. yeah. listen for their feet coming through the snow yeah. and turn and shoot. We get double, triple, quadruples yeah. with shots yep. set back to back with shotgun. No wind. Yep. Didn't want them to get our scent. And, you know, that was kind of fun. But sure. Yeah. That's yeah. the same thing. That's the same thing that we get into too. We're like, but nobody hey, does anything like that anymore. No, we don't either. We no. that's that's that used to be our primary deal. We'd go out at night under a full Snow moon. That'd be the, we'd wait for that. We we would we would thrive. We would wait for a full moon with with snow cover and that would be our go-to and now it's just you don't have to wait it's just you just you can just go but there's like you said we have spots where we'd go in at night and we shouldn't have went in because we could have got some awesome day footage but now we can't because i just still think you know i know and i'm older i can't see as good i don't know thermal i've never really done it i I know a friend of mine odell McHugh from here on South Dakota, Way yes, I said your name, Dell. He got the best bow shop in here on South Dakota. Oh, does he have an archery <laughs> shop yeah. up there? Yeah, yeah, he's got it all. He got the helmet and the whole work. Oh, oh yeah. I got you. Yeah, yeah, he's a James Junior. <laughs> <laughs> you'll have to come out and go with us <laughs> yeah. this year. This yeah. year, oh, come, we love it. Yeah, you, you'll have to come out and go with us. Oh, this me, year. yeah, okay. yeah, come yeah. out and go thermaling with but, us. It's, uh, but yeah, I mean, I just, it's so neat seeing them coming at daytime. Mm, I mean, I yeah, just, nothing sure. like nothing it. Nothing like it. No, no just, not yeah. even. Then Oof. hand call too. Do them with a hand call. You're, you're, there's yeah. more satisfaction there than any, there's, yeah. you get the sense of satisfaction. It's just so much more rewarding doing, yeah. being able to hand call a coyote in during the day. It's, 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 it's the hallmark of the sport. Yeah. And it's I'd say, pinnacle. yeah, go ahead. I'd no. say this. You know, I've kind of been semi-retired here the last couple of years because Primos have been trying to come out with a new line of callers, and we've had some problems with the developer. And then COVID. And, and then COVID. And then we were ready to bring them out this fall. And uh, then the parts, some of the components we're using were let's, different but, different than everybody else's, and then it put them off. But let's Before but, you uh, get into that, let's talk about... Uh, Let's talk about you, you. You let's talk about your the beginnings of how you got into. Video. So we yeah. with with video or, or primos, primos even. Yeah, let's. Because did you well, we'll did you kind of touch? Did you kind of go over how you got into video or not? Yeah, a little yeah. bit, but yeah. not really. Go got, for it. I got go. the video made. I had all the names on here. And yeah, works, do it. You know? Keep yeah. on with that. That so, was good. So I finally them guy D- Dakota Kurt Friesen at Dakota Video and Post in Sioux Falls. And uh, we we did it, and they got a cut. I think they got two bucks for every video, and and these were that. on uh, VHS. VHS, or D- yeah, oh, high eight camera. Yep. Okay. I went quite a ways for ever switched to DVDs. It was a ways, you know. I had okay. A few out, half of them. I did twenty four total videos. Wow. Yeah. On VHS. All total, together. Total, okay. Total. They started okay. out. Then I got them switched over. Okay. But anyways, we got it out there, and uh, so first thing I did. Is actually I got them, and it was a day before Christmas. And my wife and I, we always go to Shields and in, in, in Sioux Falls, always the day before Christmas. Place is full, you know, and, and uh, we shop other places at the mall and stuff, but we'd always stop there. And so I had that video in my pocket, 
Well, actually, no, this was earlier. This was like 95 or something. And, uh, and I had a few hunts. And I didn't even have a camera. Buzz Cook would be my, you remember, he was shot the old muzzleloader folks back in the day, you know. And he, he's, he's my wife's uncle. But he was running a high eight camera. And we just, let's just, we were watching Primos a lot on TL. We liked their bow hunting, just kind of real back in the late 80s and yep. stuff. First ones we watched, you know. And uh, so that'd be fun. So I went out for a day or two and we'd film, did three or four cuts. And I was shooting with that 300 with me. And so I had that just of like six, eight hunts. So I was in Shields and about 95 probably. And the place was packed. You know, they, where the guns are, they have a great big screen. The Shields yep. stores were yep. about the first ones to ever have end caps where you would have a, a TV for turkey calls, a TV yep. for waterfowl, yep. deer, yep. elk, all that. But they were showing big deer hunts you know on christmas on the main screen and so i'm standing there and the player was reachable so when nobody's looking i ejected their deer tape and i stuck in my coyote tape and i wouldn't even be sitting here if i wouldn't have done that and that crowd just gathered and what in the world and the guy in the white hat the manager finally come on folks just move it along then he got to looking at it, well where'd that come from the but with the helper actually watching it you know and back and forth the customer and Wanted to see the next, oh, geez, everybody, go, holy crap. You know, <laughs> so then they, oh, I put that, that's you, that's you? Or do you sell that? No. Not, so, not yet. Not, so, yet. Yeah, not yet. So then, so then the next year would come, I'd bring a little, I'd go out another day or two with Buzz Cook using his old high eight camera. And it happened like four years in a row. And they kept saying, man, look at all these people, you ought to sell it. So then that's when I went to Kurt Friesen and, so we, that's how it actually got me going. Then I wasn't going to. My wife talked me into it. Just try it. She, well, it costs quite a bit of money to get this all rolling. i ah, just go for it. So, you know, she helped, too, get me going. And so that's kind of. So then, uh, then I was going to these shows, you know, too. Started going to shows. And then I had trouble. I actually had trouble getting into the Shield stores at Rapid City. The guy that was ahead of the calls, I think, was there maybe at that time. Later, I found out. There were some guys that did do a little howling, and they were making their own video, and I think they wanted to maybe get it out before I did. Same way at Cabela's. I could not get it in Cabela's. It took me like three years or so. I take. I always go out elk hunting. You know, everybody did. If you're in Wisconsin, North Carolina, wherever, you're going to Rocky Mountains, you go by Sydney, Nebraska. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't care how far away it was. Just yep. coolest place, oh, yeah. Cabela's. You know? Yeah, that's the, that's the place. That's the Cabela's right there. Yeah, and then uh, there was a little one in Kearney and a little one in North Dakota, but the main store was Sydney. Yep. And so yep. I'd drop it off there. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll look at it. And they'd, at the counter, and they'd, nobody ever called back, nothing. So come to find out, it was the, the highest guy up in Cabela's that wasn't a Cabela, his son start hunting coyotes and he's seen it laying in the back and at, at that time the they sold videos through the gift department brian stave was ahead of that and uh he uh finally his kid took it showed his dad man this is look at this pretty good so he gave it to him and it got in cabela's finally hmm. and boy i tell you what the first few fax orders about fell over my wife got to the point where she she hear that fax when she'd be running for the office she <laughs> went over <laughs> and so so that's kind of how it started there. Then eventually, Shields. I tell you, you know, and going to these shows, like if you're wanting to start out, you know, in some kind of any kind of outdoor, you know, you want to go to shows because even though you have your booth and all that, but it seemed like you always meet one person that can really make a difference. And I met the guy from Stony Wolf Productions. I remember that. I remember that. Yeah. That, 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 that production company. Yeah, out of Minneapolis. Chaska, Minnesota, and I'm telling you, they sold, they got us, they got me in Shields, they got me in, I don't know if they got me in Bass Pro maybe too, I couldn't get in Bass Pro, or it took quite a bit longer to get in Bass Pro, but uh, then he, they were putting it, sent them to farm stores, all these different farm stores, and bow shops and everything, so I even sold them, I finally, I don't have, I have two videos of each video left, and that's it, I sold everything, I just quit making them two dvds of each i say for myself but i sold the whole all re- all the rest of them about a year and a half two years ago and stony wolf actually took them still <laughs> so, so when, when abouts you, did your videos hit stores then uh when was that yeah when when abouts did your videos hit stores oh, year wise yeah it had been um probably in the early like 2002 well two Probably 2003, the first Primos video come out. Well, that's another story. I'll, I'll go on to that. You want to know about that. Um, well, 
Okay, I, might, I got what? these names on here. Rick Paulette. You ever heard of Rick? Yeah, Paulette? oh yeah, I sold yeah. him a suppressor a couple of years. He's a he's a yeah. good, the Verminator. Good, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, now he's doing sounds for Lucky. Yeah, Tweety and Long Range Tweety, <laughs> Psycho Tweety. Yeah, yeah. You're calling Redneck, oh Rick. He was great. <laughs> but we did seven videos together. Rick I didn't I. know that. Yeah. No, I didn't. And see, after my first one. So did he film? Or you filmed? And how? What no, was the, what yeah. was the relationship? Okay. Well, I got. Like I said, all of a sudden you get out there and stuff happens. Yep. So after my first video, I got a letter from Rick in a package, and there he'd recorded about 30 bobcats he called in, like at three feet and shot them in the head and stuff, you know. Ooh, so <laughs> they were just thick at that time. And, the, and, 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 and some coyotes too. But, oh, Rick, he's something else. And, and uh, so he said, how about we get together and do some videos, you know. And, and I said, yeah, I don't care. So. So where, was, we did, where was he at then? Where was he? He's Clay Center, Kansas. Okay. He's still there. Okay. Him and his dad, Bob, uh, they've got an auto parts store there. Rick's probably rich enough now. He probably let dad run it. I don't know. Rick's making money. Lucky Duck. You yeah, know, is he? Is, yeah. is it pretty good, huh? Yeah. yeah. Well, he's got them sound. You know, Rick, yeah. I heard, you know, he's got uh, coyotes. A lot of them. In his backyard. Yeah. And then he, you know, he film or records the sounds tussling around and in heat and all that so that i mean great for him i mean that's that's good we can't do that in nebraska probably can't do it here either. probably not can't yeah sorry rick if i got you in trouble <laughs> no <laughs> but, but anyway <laughs> so i i don't care so then we made and it was so we had a double coyote calling all coyotes two was uh two two uh vhs tapes and so what we did i did some of mine and then Rick did some of his with his buddies. Then I went down there and we filmed some. Then he come up here and we filmed some. So we put it all together, and we did seven seven verminator videos. But uh, so so then what I did, I well actually another thing I thought of with my first video kind of got to rolling a little bit. wasn't in a lot of the big stores yet, but uh, Outdoor Channel was just kind of getting kind of good. I called them up. How much for a thirty second ad? And I think it was three or four hundred bucks is all it was. Oh, jeez! Yeah, I mean nothing. that's all it was. That is nothing. Yeah, and so and Kurt Friesen with the Code of Video Post, they're big into uh, the auto commercials, like dude John Elway. Yeah, his yeah. dealerships. Yeah, that's what they did all over the country. They just had a niche for that. So so he knew how to do commercials. So we took the verm the first verm. I don't know if you ever seen that. You got to watch it. I ride a horse. There's a butte by where I lived. And I get up on it, and I get the coyotes howling. Then I play a whole bugle, a Cabela's bugle that was in, you know, like if you go into Cabela's, they got replicas of uh, swords and all this. Yeah. And <laughs> I just think of more stories. Is that okay? I don't. That's fine. No, Tom no. Osborne, the football coach in Nebraska, yeah. was the grand opening of the Mitchell Cabela's. So they had me there and different, I think Dan Thompson, different ones were there. And, uh, oh, uh, like Loman calls, uh Night and hail, you know, all yeah. that. Everybody had uh, Johnny Stewart. Everybody had tables there, along with everything else. Goose hunt, everything was just huge. And the lines were all the way out the door, clear out, see Tom Osborne, have him sign something. Nebraska football coach. So I was there, and there was a little break, and I was messing around. It was about probably 6.30. I think they closed at 8. And I come over, and I seen uh, it was a little break. So I seen this Calvary stuff, and I seen this bugle. And of course, I was a band director. I can play trumpet pretty good. So I go on her. <laughs> Man, I really got to go oh, pretty good. So then all of a sudden, the the crowd started leaving, and the announcement come on Cabela's. Uh, folks, no, it's not. We're not closed. We're open here for another. So the guys they hunted me down. Oh, that's Anderson playing that bugle. You know. So then, so I used that at my intro of the Verminator video, and I cut a coyote tail off of it, and I hung it off the bell. So I'm on the beats. You got the coyotes on. <laughs> so then we went into uh, oh. some jamming music. Had a really good guitar player in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Really good, and he had an editing place. <laughs> Just head banging, you know, like, yeah. and uh, showed uh, showed us walking out in fast motion with our camera, <laughs> setting up. <laughs> and then saw bobcats, coyotes coming. <laughs> and then seen them drop. Boom, 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 boom. And what I did, I made a commercial for the Outdoor Channel with this. Highlights of all I gotta this. I got to see that. I, I haven't and, seen that. And, then, <laughs> and, and so at the very end, Rick, what's your old buddy's name? Jay. I can't leave his last name. His neighbor. Jay was shooting a 270. And a farmer, you know. Had this big old bobcat just sitting there begging for it. About 50 yards. I zoomed in on a music building. Boom. 
and a tuft of fur about this big, like a big leaf, shot up in the air. The bobcat went over like that, and here come that fur just floating down as the music died out, and it just that was it. And that was the last. That was the end of my commercial on the Verminators. Oh man! Holy cow! We're just selling seminars. People calling up, you know. So, but that's, then it, oh yeah, and that's God. kind of then I, we were. I'd run some commercial. Well, Primo seen it. Well, actually, Rick and I then we got to be pretty good buddies. Rick, he's always trying to make some money at you know some niche that he can do. He tried a frog hunting video, you know, just just any kind of video he can do. And one other thing, you hear you get on this kick, you know, just something dip. Well, he put a, a rabbit on a monster truck remote. A kite would come and he'd start running. No way. The kite would look at it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's on that video. So I, we, we got, I don't know if you know Bruce. Is it Call Bruce from Dakota Archery at, at Yankton. There's Dakota Archery, if you guys don't know, but I'm sure a lot of people know him. But he was actually the head of the whole show in Las Vegas, the ATA, is that what you call it? The big bow hunting show. It was in. I don't know the bow But, but the bow hunters come and bow, well, it was bow shooting. Olympic people, they come from okay. China, Germany, okay. everywhere. Okay. Huge. It was Las Vegas, a big show. And they had a show, a program, a banquet. I think it was a Riviera Casino. And like the top floor, it's like 4,000 people. And they had the big, like a, an Academy Award type thing. The round tables for the big shots in front and stuff. And people and. And uh, he wanted me to do a 10-minute seminar on how to shoot a kite with a bow. I said, really? What about these archery? Like, ah, just, you know. <laughs> so I cut to him. Well, I don't know. They might be a little graphic. So Rick was, Rick was scared to even, boy, you think you should do this? I don't know. He only lived once, you know. <laughs> so here, and they go out there, right? We're old Wayne Newton or Ted Newton, you know, or they have yeah. the X, you know. Yeah. I go out and stand there, people look at it. And, and Sims Laboratory was putting it on, the, the CEO of Sims, you know. The, Sims, I've heard of that's that. The, the weights on your bow, ball, major league bats, everything, the weight, golf clubs, everything, weights, they did it, the rubber weights and everything. I mean, they were big. He comes out and introduced me. I go out there. And so I sing my song first that we'll probably play at the end, maybe. Yeah. I do my song. It was out there. Come with the kite, you know. And uh, so I finish it. Well, folks, here's I've got to call. You know, call a coyote this way. You can do this, whatever, you know, whatever. And so, well, let me show you a little bit. Bow, they're tough, though, you know. Not trying to make a, uh, a video with a bow, they always go downwind the last little bit. And usually they smell. you got to really set up just perfect and have perfect conditions. How many turkeys would you get? If a turkey would smell you, and you know, yeah. you'd run off. I mean, yeah. it's just tough. So, but it was it was Rick shooting a bow, and this coyote. It was hot, like just January down. I don't know, I think it was in eastern Colorado, maybe with the TR. We just got there, but anyways. And I still I came in if I was there, and I might not have been. But Rick, he, there was this coyote just walking in, a few luck, yucca plants in this little bit, bottom, of this little draw, and Rick was using them big old aluminum arrows with yeah. a muzzy broadhead. Yeah. Probably 15 yards of yucca plant right there, and the kayak come right there, thunk, right, right, right above the right eye, and the arrow went thunk, and he goes, ah, 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 and he's pawing all over the place, and he's bumping into that blood's coming down in his eyes, bouncing off that yucca plant, like, ah, 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 you know. <laughs> Is this video playing? Yes, yes. <laughs> the whole people, oh, they're walking it. I would say oh, two boy. to. Th- Two to three hundred people got up and walked out. They <laughs> no walked way. out. No way. And then Sims, when I'm done, you know, I was about it. I showed one more hunt. It wasn't quite that bad. And I told Bruce, I said, you know, that's kind of graphic. Boy, you're right. That was kind of graphic. But it, so <laughs> Sims comes up there. Well, folks, kind of sorry for that. You know, maybe a little graphic. Well, going on now, you know. And well, Primos had a table right down front. And right after that, when the people walked up, one of the Primos guys, I don't remember who it was, he goes, Can you rewind that? <laughs> <laughs> so so i knew right then i'd fit in with primos pretty good so okay so then going back to, to the primos how i got with him um was right there <laughs> no well that was part of it but, but see will will <laughs> that's so good will that's, he's the guy you can't make that stuff up. will's the guy you know so mm-hmm. i don't know if you remember western rivers Ooh. callers yep. and cabela's yep i do and brian uh brian robertson he was ahead of that well through all this he was seeing these man what's this guy doing he's getting all this attention so he called me up with western he wanted me to kind of he took me to the shot show in las vegas year or no in in, uh, new orleans it was in new orleans 
What year was that about? Uh, early 2000, like two, four or five. Okay. And okay. I don't know. It had been, no, it was probably earlier because I got with Primo. I think my first video was 2003 with him. So 2002 or something. Okay. And uh, after, <laughs> I would say I filmed Rick riding a bull and gillies in Las Vegas. And he got bucked off and his head was crooked the whole rest of the trip, right? Uh, I'd put ice her up going home on the plane, but that's on the video, Verminator video. Yeah, I've got to watch that. Yeah. So anyways, um, so I went down there, and I was in uh, Western Rivers booth, you know, and they wanted to make me some hand calls, and, and they, they already made them. I had, you know, I was saying, they're little, kind of little chintzy little, thin little things, you know. And, I, uh, and at this time, you weren't, you had no agreements with anybody. No, you were Mar just. I think it was Mark Drury called me up, because they had mad calls. And I, I he called, tried a time or two, and I, I didn't answer him, but, uh, but anyway, I was down there yet, and uh, Will Primos, they had, Primos had a booth, a few booths down on the other side of the aisle. Boy, I'd like to go over there and give him this thing, even though I, <laughs> I'm with Robinson Outfit, Western River. <laughs> so I finally, it was a little break, I went down there, and Will was kind of standing there, and I said, hey, Will, I'm Randy Anderson. Sorry to bother you. Oh, it's okay. You know, I got this video, you know, and I know you guys have, they had their own pair of calls, and they'd even had a video up by then, and um uh, and I said, you know, I make some videos. They're not too bad. And if you ever need a little help, you know, doing some calls, I'd kind of like to have my own calls someday. You'd be, I don't want to get into it, do it all myself. You guys know what you're doing. And so, and, uh, you know, I kind of turned around. He just kind of just chucked it over on, the, on yeah. the table, you know, that, well, he'll probably never watch it, you know. And well, he, I don't think he did. But anyways, so um, I was talking about Cabela's. They were, you know, when I, when I finally got in Cabela's, they ran that video 12 months out of the year for several years. You'd go in, I could be on vacation, going by, I'd go by Sydney, I'd open the door, and I could hear me howling. Clear off in the corner, they'd had that TV that loud. Everybody was buying stuff. What camouflage, what gun? He shoots a 243, they go buy one. Yep. You know, this, that, and just she got a tally ho, he's playing the, yeah, I'll, get, I'll go buy one of them. You know, that, that's just, so they were selling a lot of stuff. My gloves I was wearing, you know, I yeah. just bought some at Cabela's. And, yeah. Yeah, them are our gloves. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. And so it was playing all the time. Well, Primos had an end cap then. They put one in for elk hunting, especially right right before elk season, like September, like August, September. And they had all their calls there, and they had their elk hunting videos. And my video kept showing up in their TV. The Cabela's guys were putting my – because they were selling just so many stuff because of that video. So Bruce Adala – with Hadala and Associates, they were out of Minnesota, and he, he they had about I don't know twenty some guys that were reps for Primos because Primos couldn't cover everything they were so big, so they hired these reps and companies, and one of the reps come up and they complained. He said, "How come that uh, coyote video? Every time I stop by here, it's in our TV." <laughs> so then, so then they realized they told well, that's just selling stuff like crazy. So they found and wondered who I was. So it was Bruce Hadala told Will Primos, "You got to get this guy down there." down to your headquarters and look he's quite the guy or whatever he's just a redneck kind of you know, whatever common guy you know and so i go down there and they i even stayed at will's house a couple three nights he took me to the best restaurants and everything and uh but we were at the table and we put that verminator video in of course primos is kind of that way you know they, they like stuff like that the old rick's truck with a rabbit on it you know and all that stuff and and uh, the bobcat blowing up at the end, that's all on the, the intro to it. Pretty long intro. And at the end, Rick and I always go, Rick went, this kind of spur of the moment. At the end, Rick thing in his videos always, talk to you later. He go like that. So then we were standing there at the end, you know, and of our, of the very, and then goes to us, yeah, I'm Rick Paulette. I'm Randy Anderson. Rick goes, talk to you later. And I went, like that, you know, just stuff yeah. like that, which yeah. is stupid, but they, but they like that. So we played that whole thing for Primos, and the internet, and they just sat there and they looked, they shook their head, and and uh, well, I guess you're one of us or whatever, you know. And then, so then he started talking uh, how much you know we we'd pay you so much a video, and we'd pay you all your mileage, all your motels, your hunting license, everything, anything to do when you leave Butte, Nebraska, and you go get on a plane in Omaha. We'll pay the rate, like what a post worker would get, 50, 60 cents a mile. Yep. Come and go on every meal, the whole works. And give me the cameras, all that stuff. And uh, then when I come down to the calls, you know, I kind of had an idea. Will wanted me to get an idea which call. You know, and I had the four. I had the hot dog, little dog, kai and the double whammy. And uh, 
So I kind of explained that to him. And then Will said, well, we'll give you this much percent, which was like three, four times more than what normally. Because yeah. uh, I knew like Night and Hale at them, some of them showed, what do you guys get for, they were, yeah, we get that. Well, it was quite a bit more. And Jimmy Primos, he's Will's cousin. He was a drill sergeant in the Marines, you know. <laughs> Everybody kind of knows Jimmy. So he can get a little grumpy, you know. What? You know, what? That's really crazy. You know, and it's kind of funny. But Willie stuck to it. And uh, so then so then that's kind of where I started with Primos. And we did the calls. And they did, they did a couple years big advertisements, you know. And it was just huge. I couldn't believe it. You know, and I was only getting, well, let's say, I'll just say the hot dog call sold for $25. And the stores get most of that stuff for 50%. So I wouldn't get my royalty was half of that yep it just it, it was less than a dollar and my wife was mad what in the world you're getting screwed and all this and then you get your first check and they sold three thousand of them or what you know that call and two thousand of this one and you know it's, you know and i didn't have to do nothing yep. i ain't out stocking shells yep. and all that but yeah primos really treated me good i mean they still do i mean it's just you know it's just just hard to believe i never thought well even video wise i never thought i'd make that one video you know, and that'd be it. Well, then Rick Paulette. Then pretty soon is Primos. Then it's Stony Wool. Yep. And he just, you just keep out there. And, you know, I just can't believe I did that many videos. And then, and then you know, every, I quit because everybody else did. You know, he couldn't sell a, a video anymore. Turkey hunting, monster bulls with a real tree. Everybody quit because everybody can watch them you know, yeah. on YouTube. Yeah. And stuff. It went but, to digital. It just yeah. went, it changed everything. Right. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, it. And then I, I always kind of wondered what would ever happen if Primos would put it up as high as their their turkey and their deer because pr yeah. Predator was the yeah. least thing. Yep. Yeah, so the, it's how it, it still is. It was just still yeah. just the least thing still is. they're worried about, which I don't blame them. They just make bazillions on that other stuff. But if I, you know, because they, they did talk about, I did actually that Kurt Friesen talked about a TV show too. You know, and I kind of turned him down. I don't know. That's going to take the fun out of it and everything and pressure. I don't know. And then Primo's talked about it too, and then he kind of decided, you know. But but you did. But but I just do. I just you, do two shows a year. Do, are you still doing? Is, yeah, are you? Yeah, you're still. Yeah, I was obligated. just on in January. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we do two TV shows a year, just me. You know, thirty minutes. And Gosh, that's re, not enough though. They, they rewind. They'll rerun them Replay a couple it. times in the summer. But yeah. They, there there's so many guys out there that I can tell you that are, and I'm in, I'm one of them. There's just there's nothing else. There's nothing on TV anymore. I mean, I've got a buddy down in Texas that has a show on TV. It was all <clears throat> your stuff or Les's stuff that a guy would, your stuff early. I mean, we that's what we would look forward to watching. And now yeah. it's just, I mean. Yeah, I quit, you know, and I was getting, I kind of re, semi-retired a little bit because these new callers weren't coming out. We, we've, they were supposed to come out almost three years ago. So <laughs> are you, are, are you, uh, you're you're still obligated to put up two episodes a year with Primos. Yeah, that's an agreement with them. You're still obtaining royalties for yeah, the calls. calls. Yeah, they still that's nothing change. And our our contract is just as long as they're selling my stuff, I get paid. That's, and and so there's no yeah. end. There's no, no due date or nothing. On well, it. when Primos, when uh, see uh, Bushnell bought Primos, and about then I can't remember before or after that. Uh, Vista Outdoors is huge. Yep, they make rockets yep. for NASA and all this stuff. And one of the guys in there, I think, had a little niche for hunting. So he he got he bought so they bought Bushnell for like two billion dollars. Then Bushnell bought Primos and some different companies and stuff. And uh, so I actually get my checks from Bushnell now instead of really? Primos. But so But there's no I mean, there's no there's no date of expiration. There your, well, I was saying three years ago when we started this project, the Bush, electronic Bushnell call. Bushnell wanted a contract. So it's up in May three years and then but that already talked to primos they said yeah we're gonna re re we'll renew it yeah. yeah it's gonna be and i think they're gonna push a little harder now primos they said they had their best year for a long time last year they're really yeah. rolling so now maybe they're gonna spend a little more time hopefully and but i you know i was filming my own you know i quit them videos truth 12 was the last one and 12 so, was the last video yeah truth 12 the primos video then i made yeah. three by my own colin kyle's one two and three then I did two instructionals, Mastering the Art for Primos. Then Rick and I did seven. So I did a total of 24 videos. And they all had, like, I mean, it wasn't easy. They all had, uh, you know, 70, 80 kills, you know. Yeah, that's Jeez. crazy. I mean, I mean yeah, that I was do the tough. math on that. And then that's, that's when the coyotes had to me so bad. And we'd put, there, 
in my wife's uncle's, he put a Charley bull out there that one winter. It was two weeks before we seen a coyote track in the snow. Yeah. Just, I mean, now just no coyotes. Yep. That's why I had to travel around, you know, yep. quite a bit. Yep. Yeah. So, but that's, you know, it's, it's worked out pretty good. And like, I just, and I would say maybe for you people that are wanting to start, do something like what you guys and us are doing, just be real, you know, don't yep. dream up stuff. Yep. You know, Rick has some funny stuff, but I mean, some, I think don't. some, they're kind of dreaming up something to how we can be popular. Just let it happen. Yeah. Pray about it, whatever. Let's be, let it happen. Yeah. And don't, don't try to be the top, the top guy in the whole country. You know, don't, nobody can call a coyote in, but, but me, you know, just shoot. Everybody makes mistakes and I can't call coyotes. Been with plenty of guys and probably you're watching it. Been with me. I can't, there are days I can't call Jack in either, yeah. you know, and just be, be real, be truthful and, and just let it happen. And that's, that's what I did, you know, and I, I just kind of let it happen and it worked out. And, and so that's, in, that's, that's really good info. That's awesome yeah. because you see there's the, what happens now is, and that's what sets somebody like you apart from you, you're distinguished. People know who you are. They look at what you've done. And then, there's so many guys out there that really try to simulate somebody else. You know, they're, 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 yeah. they, they, they see maybe this guy's successful. So they try to do exactly what he's doing. Yeah, and and it, they, it, they want major league baseball players or NASA car drivers and this and that shoot, just take Glenn Zink and your neighbor and Rick yep. took Jay as well. He's 270 people just like, and if you miss I mean, I got more people liking the misses almost yeah. and more. And yeah. Like, yeah. They just yeah. get the biggest, put it on there. Yeah. Don't, yeah, like some guys probably. I don't want everybody to know I can miss a coyote. You know? <laughs> yeah, do do uh, yeah. have you have you been hit up from pretty high end, like I would call uh, high roller guys, like professional athletes or yeah, more... Ted Nugent. I mean, he used to send me cards and stuff. And want, never went yeah. hunting with him though. No, we, we well, what happened? He was friends with uh, Dakota Archery, that Bruce. Yep. You know, Archery. Yep. Every year he go there and he just. Uh, yeah, hunt. I was gonna say he'd, he'd go out there, wouldn't he, and put a deal on for them. Yeah, well, what happened to radio stations, them college radio stations wanted to get on him, get him on there and get all fired up about gun control. Well, then he couldn't turn that down. Yeah. And then he hunt the Missouri River's right in the back door of Dakota yeah. Archery, and they had a stand right there for him. So he'd shunt, then he'd shoot there and stuff. But, oh, yeah, he'd send, he was in Africa one time. He sent me a postcard, and he goes, he called me the, verm, the Verminator Master or something like that, and then he, and he goes, called me blood, blood, a blood brother and all this stuff, and then he'd, because I, I was advertising in his magazine too, which probably helped. Okay. Bit, okay. Know, yeah. Stuff. But, but yeah, he would. Let's. I'll bring a bag full of twenty two two fifty and one. We'll go shoot him up and stuff like this. But he never, you know. But I did have. Uh, there was a chance for me being on Jay Leno back when I was in uh, the Kansas City doing a show, great big show, and uh, the guy walked in. They had a huge, uh, huge like theater on big tall curtains and a and big curtain deal. I don't know. There's like 800,000 people come in for a seminar. Well, I started going there. And that one guy, he said he was a, a talent scout for Jay Leno. Afterwards, he says, man, you're something else. I was here. I thought, well, I wonder what this is. Hardly anybody in there. And you start singing that song just like Billy Graham. Here come everybody right down in the middle of the aisle. And they just fill the whole thing up. And by the time you're done with the song, their place was full. <laughs> so, so, but he, because uh, Jay always had the champion turkey collar yeah, on there. Yeah, yeah. But then, so, so then we got to talking about it and, uh, you know, man, you could get Jay. He probably good. Teach him how to blow a coyote call. That'd be kind of funny and that. But then, yeah, but I said, you know, when the coyote comes in, you know, we kill him. Oh, oh yeah. And you don't eat a coyote like a turkey, you know? And, uh, so that kind of <laughs> just went. <laughs> just went. <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah. Yeah. You oh, I'd, at, you the, should, at the you, shot did, show, I get, they didn't want to see your bow hunting video. huh? Yeah. At the shot show, you know, I get, uh, Oh, some of them from back a ways, you know, some of them, oh, that one country western singers would be there and they'd have their boy with them and I'd talk to them, you know, about that. There'd be I can't think Aaron somebody and uh different ones. But I should I'll tell Ted Nugent story though. Is that okay? Yeah. Just a quick one. Oh yeah. That the the Primos booth was pretty big, laid out. They had uh, rooms in the back, you know, to for Cabela's and meeting rooms and stuff and and I was there just to promote my little sector of the predator calls and dealer. You know, it's a dealer show, shot go, a shot, uh, the shot show is. You just can't go in there like anybody. Yep, you right. got to be a dealer. Yep, yep. You know, you got to have a bow shop, you know, Bass Pro or somebody, Walmart, you know. And so I was there for the questions. Well, Ted Nugent rolls in with the queen of the forest. 
his wife, and uh, he had this big trench coat on. And Primos had this, you know, the can you turn over. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they had a big, it was about the size of a trash can, big rounder, and it was all, and it, it had a whole bunch of them in there, but they were fake. They were plastic, cost them some money to do them. They were rubber, and they had a T-shirt wadded up in them, a Primos T-shirt, the can on it, T-shirt. And so Ted come up there, and he put his, put his leg up on a chair, and he's had these little round tables. Yeah, you know, because he, he, he was getting his calls from Primo, so that he always stopped by there. And so I'm standing there, and I noticed this one guy, uh, just a salesman or whatever. He was watching. He kept creeping closer and closer and closer. And finally, you know, he said, hey, Ted, he said, you wouldn't be able to sign a T-shirt for my son. He just thinks the best of you. Sure. He grabbed that rubber can out of his hand, pulled out this knife like that out from under his coat, cut the top of it out, pulled that T-shirt out, all wrinkled, spread it out on the table and cut a hole right here and put on the top, wrote on it, gut shot, Ted Nugent. Oh, my boy's going to love that. You know, <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Then I, then, you know, again, that's not me. You know, it was just, I hit it just right. You know, I come out with a hunting video at the right time, you know, and I don't claim anything special, but. I go to these shows, you know. I got to go into that big show in uh, Pennsylvania, the biggest show, con- consumer show, you know. It was like 10 days, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And uh, I'd, be, I'd do a seminar, Lee and Tiffany would be right after me, or Jim Zumbo, Outdoor Life, you know, all these, and I'd be in there. And I would get as many or more standing room yep. only just because everybody wanted to know how to call Kyle. So yep. I don't think it's yep. that, me that much. But... I was going to at Des Moines, Iowa. They had a show, and Ted Nugent was supposed to be there on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and and I was doing uh, seminars Friday night, uh, two on Saturday and one on Sunday afternoon in show clothes. Well, Ted never showed up Friday, Saturday, and so in their seminar room was like a gymnasium, and it was divided in thirds with great big curtains, and there was three stages in there. So that Sunday morning, I'm at my booth a little early and everything, and the manager comes out, Randy, I hate to do this to you. We'll pay you anyway. We got paid for the seminar and got a free booth and everything. And he goes, but, you know, Ted did show up this morning. He's out signing autographs or back clear down the street. For 10 bucks, you can get your names. He'll sign it. <laughs> so, so I'm sitting there. And, oh, okay, well, we'll pay you. But he, he needs to do the whole, he's going to take the whole deal. And we're taking the curtains out and stay. He's going to use the whole thing. Well, so many people complain. Some of them drive three, 400 miles to see me. They'd be there. And they went to the manager. And about, about 15 minutes before my seminar, was supposed to be like at 1 or 2 o'clock, the manager goes, Randy, can you get your seminar together? We have too many people complaining. We're going to add that third one, shut Ted down by a third, and then, so, I mean, that was pretty impressive. Yeah, That's is. how yeah, much, yeah. not me, but, I mean, just the fact that, you know, that, that Predacolin was just, I just hit it just right. I mean, yep. it was just coming, and the people were crazy over it. So. That's, well. Do you, do you still do any seminars then or no? Well, I was up until the COVID. Yeah. Yeah, but, I mean, I ain't, I ain't doing it for just for, I mean, I had to make a little money at it because I, I, what I was doing, I was charging $2,000 for a seminar and, and uh, expenses. And I was surprised going to Indiana, Ohio, how many? Utah, I do. I do a Friday night. I'd find somebody that would kind of, they'd take me around, and I'd go to this town. Like I'd be at a senior citizens. I'd be at a church for a fish fry thing. I'd be at an auditorium at a, like a regular show, and uh, you know. So I get that's it. I do usually do three. Get six thousand dollars. My flight, everything, trip to the airport, the whole thing, everything was all paid. So I was doing them for a couple three years, and then the COVID, and I haven't. I haven't really got back into it yet so how many would you do a year well i was doing this when uh what i kind of when the videos quit i saw oh, i probably been doing this for i did it for three or four years and then what i would do primos would just send me to shows and i wouldn't have to take any product well i didn't bring any product to these either i just said order them online or whatever go to cabela's and whatever but i didn't want to mess around with all the mess with all that you know but Primo's just sent me, and there's always some business, like a Bass Pro Store, a uh, warehouse, what they call that, a warehouse. Sportsman's Warehouse. Sportsman's Warehouse, yeah. yeah. And them guys would have all my stuff. So I'd be at the Sportsman's Warehouse booth. I'd be at whatever booth had my stuff. Then I'd go do the seminars. And they always said it looked like the Pied Piper. I'd leave my seminar, it'd be like 500 people following me over <laughs> by their, They'd run out. They, oh, I said, you got to have more calls. They'd always run out. They'd really? 
Yeah. So on your when you would go do your seminars, the the booths that you were at, you weren't getting paid to be at those booths. Like, would you get paid with, to be at like uh, Sportsman's? Yeah, work? yeah. You, with Primos, they were paying me a lump sum. To, oh, all my expenses that was included with your seminar and stuff. Yeah, you, you were right. Yeah. Okay. So I just go do the seminars and all you know, all my stuff was selling. You know, for I'm only getting a little royalty. Yeah. But I mean, even no, but getting a name out there, then they get home and they. Well, you know, I should get that. Then they get on my website, maybe. Look me, I gave them a card, my website. And they had questions. They'd call me up and all that, you know. So yeah. so you were making, on, on those seminars, you were generating a pretty good, I mean, depending on how many of those you, did you ever, could you go out and do those yourself? Yeah, that's what I said when I was getting 2,000. Yeah. You were doing, you weren't yeah. have, you weren't waiting for some kind of a show to pop up. Or no, Primos would people just, get a hold of me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah people yeah. just get a hold of me. Well, I mean, yeah, we got a church that's doing this. Well, let me find... See if I can find a couple more in that area. And so then I just finally there'd be I find somebody. One was a retired sheriff and he wanted to do one for the police department, a fundraiser for the police department. I got like, you. Just stuff like that. Yeah. yeah I got you. That's pretty cool. Yeah, then they could kind of read they could deduct it somehow through the police department. Yep. And yeah, and then and I always talk to any of them shows, boy, if you can get a bowl of chili or something in there for yeah. these people, they'll, they'll get quite a few. And <laughs> that always feed them and they get a lot more. So have now. you solicited anything? Like, have you tried to, 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 to advertise to no, go out? And you I, haven't. No. It's just, just yeah. you, you'll get contacted and then yeah. you would. And I would say, you know, if anybody's interested, I mean, I might get back into it again, but it's, I mean, in my seminars, you know, a lot of people just stand up and talk, you know? Yeah. And it's, to me, I was always boring. I got footage, actually. Okay, now let's cut. I'm going to howl. The cut's going to answer back. I'm going to challenge him. He's coming. I'm going to shoot him. I'm like, yeah, right. Well, I'll show it. I'll actually show it. That same footage. So you'll do a video. And it's all backed by video. The whole thing's backed by video. So yeah. you'll almost commentary the video. Right. I'll commentary. It's all the sounds out of it. And I edit it exactly for a seminar. You know, I don't show it. Mm. It's fast enough to keep. Yeah, and I go through everything I do, like the three stages of calling, and I do all that stuff. And, uh. And so, yeah, like I it, mean, it works great. At Valentine, uh, that few years ago. That was way back. That was 99, probably. No, no. I went, oh, the one you went to. Yeah, yeah like that, that was, had to yeah. be five, five or six, four, five, six, seven years, somewhere in there. Yeah. Right. Is, is that a basic template of what you that would was, do? Yeah, but only longer. Yeah, the I one, do like an hour and a half. I'll go as long as they want, like you guys here. I usually go at least an hour and a half. Then I have questions at the end. No, I ask questions for a half hour. You know. Gosh, we, that's. Well, I'll tell you what. Well, let's let's uh, let's do some questions after or after we get. Yeah. They're talking the, about the, me doing one at the runnings in winter. As soon as the new calls come out, huh. oh, a few people around here. The new e calls. Yeah, I'll demonstrate them and do I'll they do have a, a date seminar for that yet. As far no, as we no. got to get the caller first. It's been right. three years because that's what our plan. We were going to do this about six or seven months ago yeah. when they were before because right. they were planning on having that. And we, you were going to show it here and we were going to go through some, which we could do another one if this is good for you and you get it and you want to come in and do yeah, some other. Care. Yeah. Um. So I mean, that's uh, uh, videos. Um, and I actually, Fox Pro had me go out to their headquarters. And, uh, and uh, the guy that picked me up at the airport, he's probably, he might be watching. I can't, sorry, I can't think of your name, but he, he used to get a hold of me on uh, giving me reports how he's doing. And all the way from the airport to Fox Pro, he was an older guy, you know, probably 60s maybe. And uh, he said, I cannot call these coyotes in. And I, th and I might be wrong, but Fox Pro, some guys are watching, but... Um, I don't think Fox Pro had a coyote on video in Pennsylvania by at that time. They had a lot of fox, and they were going yep. like me <laughs> somewhere else because yep. our coyotes were all mazed out. But, yep. but I, I might be wrong. But anyways, but I didn't think that if they did. They didn't have much because I was kind of watching them as they come out. And uh, and he says, "Yeah, we just can't call them in Pennsylvania." Well, did you ever howl? No. So, so I did that seminar, and those guys from New Jersey, those even people that flew in in there to see my video at Fox Pro headquarters. And uh, then I, I asked, well, is anybody here seeing my video? Yeah. Well, it, have your, has your calling improved? Yeah. I mean, I was getting testimony. Stand right up, sir. Man, I couldn't call in Jack until I started howling, you know. Of course, and then some people, they don't try it enough. You know, one or two times, yeah. oh, that don't work. Yeah. You know, you got to keep that. But this guy, he had a lady, if I remember right, he had a lady that had coyotes coming in her yard. She had some, like, little mountains behind her place. And he'd been trying nothing. So he went in there and he howled, the old hot dog, let her bow. He said, let her bow. And a coyote don't go, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. they're going to, you know, let her rip, you know. And big male come right in, he shot him. But last I knew he'd shot 76 coyotes in Pennsylvania. 
And I'm sure that's been a few years ago. But he wow, always, that's, yeah, that's, I mean, it's just, oh, like me. My buddies had him educated. As soon as I started howling, it doubled, tripled my yeah. chances. Yeah. yeah. See, that, and that so, answers one of the questions. Why did yeah. you start howling? You know, because yeah. that, that, that's testimony right there. Yeah. I remember the first time. When did you, when did you, would you say that your, your little dog and your hot dog came out? Well, it would have been, uh, I joined Primos. We worked on him calls. And uh, what we did, you're kind of wondering about that, too. Primos, about 40 miles away, is still where they do it. They got a Anthony Foster as a, he has the, uh, what do you call them, CNC machines. Yep. And he does wood. You got all them Primos, beautiful uh, box calls for turkey. Mm -hmm. They're all made there. And Will said, you got something in mind? Yeah, well, I'll drive you down. So Will and I, <laughs> and driving down there, Will stops a car because there's a turtle, and he pulled off cars going by, and he goes there. It's kind of like a box turtle we yep. have, a land turtle. Yep. And he gets out this Sharpie permanent, and he writes Will Primos on there and then sets him over and lets him go. He always puts in a date. He puts him on there. That's pretty <laughs> neat. Yeah. So, so we're going down there. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, so then what we do, I would kind of give him some specs. And old Anthony, he'd, wheel, he'd whittle away on using acrylic. So we get, finally I get him to read this wide, that long, and I blow him. I go out the back door of that thing. He was out in the country. Every time Will would go with me and he'd put his fingers in his ear, he just couldn't believe how darn loud that way. He just couldn't believe it And so on the hot dog. And so then we get it just right. Then they'd send that to a guy in Wisconsin that had the, the what do you call it, the dye, make you dye for that mouthpiece, make a dye for the wedge, dye for this and that. And then that's how they were made. So. And that was probably when early two thousands. Yeah, because yep, because it was after the two. I come out with a video in ninety nine, and then I didn't make one the next year. I said, "Well, I'll be it." And then Rick could get the deal from Rick. Well, he'd help me a little bit, so we'd do it because our coyotes were just nowhere. Me just killed them all. So, so then that would have been right after that because my next video, uh, calling cows one two, was number one. The truth about calling cows with Primo. Cause I got your, the first, <clears throat> I, when I, it was just when I got out of college, it had to be 2001 or yeah, 2002. Primos right in there. The first one. Yeah. Cause I got your hot dog yeah. and I went very first time I used it straight South of here, about three miles. I just ripped the howl off and freaking mangy ass male comes right up and I shoot him. <laughs> oh, one howl yeah, ripped off. Yeah, I remember yeah. it plain as day. And it was with your big, the, it yeah. had red, the, the red, yeah. the red and the black tube. And yeah. it was, I've still got it. I have it in my pack, but yeah. that's well, when I kind of started looking into that a little because it was relatively new doing, yeah. doing yeah. strictly vocals pretty much. And while you're talking about that, you know, over the years, I was thinking driving up here, the fastest coyotes I've ever called in have been with a howler. And I can think of, I think, six times I never got the second howl out. Well, you know how I go, yep. sitting there a little bit. Boom! My guy over the Ed knob just shot one coming on a dead run yep. right at him. You know, at that happened, I mean, I can think of six times where it's just. That fast. That fast with one howl. And then, well. Two years ago in the fall, I had my alpha dog. I used that Primo's trigger stick. I put it on that stand when it's windy, and it was grazed like this table. And I was out in this pasture. I was going to look at a dam, and it was in the oh, it was in the winter, but it was open winter like this one. I might as well go look at this guy's dam, but it's out there. I'm going to take my call and stuff. And I sat, couldn't hardly find a place so flat and just roll, gradual only, no trees, no brush, nothing. And I sat there and I put it out there, and I was using the alpha dog, and I just hit play. And it's timed out like I'm actually doing it. How once, a little bit, how to. And and I it was windy. What am I doing? And I turned it wide open and on a tripod, looked like a dork, you know, right? <laughs> and I turned it on, one howl, and I, I'm putting my face mag on, my got a shell in there, everything. And after the second howl, I look up and there's a coyote this far standing there looking at that, about 60 far. Where'd he come from? Yeah. And it howled again. Woo! He's like motorcycle rider. He just stand there. Didn't scare him at all. So I pulled up and missed. I shook me up even. Then <laughs> I had about 120 yards, and I did the old woo. Everybody says I had a patent that. It'd be like the George Foreman grill. I can always stop him. Just, yeah. just hold it out. And he turned broadside, and I hit him. But, but that means it can just happen so fast. Well, yeah. While you're talking about that, <clears throat> t tell us some, some details on – like a, a 
a picture of how you would make a set, not necessarily obviously playing the wind, <clears throat> but your mindset, your calls, how you use it, what you go in trying to do. Like a, like a uh, like a standard operating procedure set that you go through. Well, I mean, most people watching here know because it's on every video. But I would say, you know, they're cut. You know, I don't. People want to keep it moving, and then I don't know. I have this thing. If somebody's with me, even the guy's been with the years, it bothers me when if I'm sitting there. Oh, geez, they're probably thinking, is he ever going to blow it again? You know. So I hurry up when I'm yeah. with somebody else. Yeah. Now I'm out by myself. I'm having so much fun the last couple of years. I just go out to my old spots. Get up, hear a howl, go right after him, set up again. You know, oh, I'm just yep. having a blast. But, uh, but Explain. I have, well, what I have, you know, oh, it's probably five years ago, I did a show with Primos right up here in South Dakota with uh, Steve Tatum. Yep, I remember that yep. when that happened. Yep. Jimmy, yep. And he, we were standing by a bail just out of the blue. Well, Randy, how's, what's your theory or how do you call, you know, or what, what, you know, and I got to thinking, quit, man, I don't know. And I go, I got to thinking of football. Well, there's three phases of the game. You got offense, defense, and special teams. So I kind of, I was just scared. Like, so then I, well, then I got to thinking, well, how do I do it? Well, I always howl first, you know, depending on, there's so many howls you can do. You can do serenade with your buddy. You can do, you know, I, I always start pretty much with the old siren howl. Just like I did way back when I was a kid, fueling up the, the tank with the Austin howl the first few times in a bark or two. And then, you know, because normally if, over the years, when I'm fishing, bow hunting, whatever, the very first coyote that howls is that's what he does normally. It's like a lot of people say it's just a, you know, a friendly howl. But it, I always, you know, Bill uh, Austin calls it interrogation. You're interrogating the area. I'm just an old coyote over here. Anybody else out there? You know, any other coyote? And so, so that's kind of what I do. And then I go from there, you know. And it's the craziest thing, you know. One thing I started doing probably, oh, early 2000s, I started, when I had the hot dog and the little dog, I started, answer, I thought maybe I should answer myself, because I Primos kept talking about when they're doing cow L calls and stuff, they'll put a guy out this way over there, and they'll do different cow, L, cow calls. They'll use this call, that call, same with turkey hunting. They'll do a hen on a slate, they'll do a hen on a box call or a diaphragm. It's like you got three different hens yep. there. What if it'd be, you know, do it, so that's one thing I think that really helped me too. So I would take the the hot dog and I'd go way in that, then I'd maybe go out on dip, then i use a, the little dog, like I'm answering again, and it sounds a little different. Yep. And so I used it, and then I'd set her and wait, you know. So then, uh, so that that gave me another oh, no, whole new uh, ar deal in my arsenal. And that, and that really made a difference. And then, so then I started, uh, we do serenades, you know, and then, then after uh, electronic calls, then, uh, you know, then I would use it a little more. You know, if the guy sitting with me didn't really howl much or something, or we just play a serenade and we'd howl with it. Yep. But it's the craziest thing. Sometimes they won't answer the, the single howl. They won't answer the mother howls or they'll answer the serenade. Then the next time you, you just don't know. And I'll say it right now. I don't claim to know why a coyote does what it does. I, I mean, I know there's out guys out there that do. I do not know. I'll tell you this. There was maybe these guys are still around, but in it was in uh, Predator Extreme magazine. Maybe there was these guys, two or three of them, and I think they were from Ohio and Indiana. And they went for maybe a couple, three years, and they kept track of everything. The temperature, time of year, till of the earth, moon phase, barometer, before a storm, after a storm, rainstone, snowstorm, temperature, where we sat, all this. And at the end of the article, it was good. End of the article, they go, sometimes they come and sometimes yeah. they don't. <laughs> I mean, that's, it. that's just how it is. <laughs> we, we were talking about the same thing about a week ago. We're like, there was 10 coyotes yeah. here one night, and the next night was the same. There was nothing there that night. We're like, Here's the difference. This was Monday and this was Tuesday. Uh, I mean, there's no rhyme or reason. No, there you isn't. can't. You can't. I know guys want to know. You know, they're no. right now. Well, what's how would what would Randy do? Well, for one thing, I would have to be sitting there. I mean, it's hard to say. Well, what would you do if this? And a, yeah. I, a lot of questions I get are, you know, the answer and they never come. You know, well, I'd probably I would try this maybe or that, but 
well, the best thing, if they're not coming, just move in. Yeah. You know, I'm trying to stay, yep. stay low. And of course, out east, you ain't going to have enough permission to go on, you know, enough. But even if you can close in 100 yards, and then another little thing, by turning your head, you know, and I, I always scold guys, too, that I'm with, you know, the wind's blowing like this, and they're just going, and they never move. you got to pan it around. Yeah. You, know, you can tell. Well, you do it. You guys know. If a coyote's howling, you know, he howls, and he just turns around, you can tell, like, man, is that the same coyote? Sounds yep. like he's far away. Exactly. Yeah. Or he's coming, or, you know. Yep. So, you know, that makes a lot of difference, too. So you can howl this way. You can throw your sound, you know, and then, and then you can, like, if you're on a rabbit call, you got one coming, you only get downwind. It helps a little bit to just blow up wind. Blow up wind a little bit. That kind of can help him from circling clear back around. So there's a lot you can do just by where you're blowing the call. And uh, that's one thing you can't do with electronic call. It's exactly. just covering the whole area, yep. you know, pretty much anymore. So that's exact. That's hundred percent the truth. And same way, like another thing, I'm thinking about it. Electronic caller always. I use probably more of a crosswind. Yeah. But I mean, the wind thing is another. You could talk about that for a half hour or more. But uh, you know, and I, what I always say, like my 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 notebook here, uh, guys ask at seminars. Well, just pretend you got a football field and and the wind's coming from the one pylon over to the other one, going across the field. I said, you know, I would set up about the 20, you know, or put your collar, set in the middle and put your collar up about the 20. And then is any coyote over this way is going to circle around, you know. And then I always have a guy way over here about the 20 because they're going to come right up the sideline, you know. And uh, so you can do that with your electronic collar. I always, you know, the Alpha Dog had three speakers, so it wasn't so, so hard. But you have just a single speaker. I just point it always. I tell the guy, point it right exactly into the wind. The wind will take it around. Yep. The same way, bull harder, you know, with your hand call that way. I mean, you still want to pan it, but so. Yeah, that's, that's good. What info. I learned over the years, anyways. So when you go in and you set your you you get your set going, yeah. you said when you start with howls, it's more of a, what you'd call an interrogation howl, right? And that's my first stage. And that's, I usually I'll give it. If nothing happens, I usually give it unless there's guys sitting with me and I'm worried about, you know, why is he waiting so long? Yeah. But, but uh, you know, 10 minutes at least probably because I ain't any hurry to get to the next one. It's a great, especially if I know they're there. If I see fresh tracks, if he has scrape, yep. you know, yep. they're working the ridges. And so and, and so I, I give them about 10 minutes. Then depending on time of year anymore, you know, I ain't doing a prey sound that much because – you know, like a rabbit or bird. I mean, I'm more apt to do. No, that's all different. we. That's all you play is the rabbit. No, that's all we play is oh. the rabbit. It's all. That's all. That's <laughs> yeah. all we play is the yeah. rabbit. Everybody. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you know, so that's what stage two was. You know, any kind of distress of a prey animal. Yep. You know, which shoot, you so it still works. You know, depending on how hard it's been hit. You know. Yeah. But of course now. In, or then, or you can just skip that and go to stage three is just kai eyes and coyote fights and pup distress and all that. One of the big mistakes I made uh, is I put that dynamite pup, Sean Hyden helped me get some of these sounds, and we got a dynamite uh, pup distress, and I was showing that all the time and how we, we would you know, use it, not just. See, one thing, you know, when I first started, and a lot of people, they go, they do a howl, even if they're howling, do a howl, do a rabbit, they do I, 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 like three or four times, set than go. But so many times I was seeing coyotes in the sand hills, seven, eight hundred thousand yards laying there. They did, they might have howled and then laid down as soon as you start to rabbit, whatever. And then, then uh, you would go to that pup distress. Some, maybe one would stand up and whatever. And then if you would stop, like after just three or four of them, then leave, and that was it. But when we kept that up, I don't, that just completely changed everything because. And it doesn't have to just be pup distress because if we see it in the Nebraska sand hills, you can see so far, and I've seen a mile away coming. And, and uh, it just depends. You can tell what sound they like, you know, and you, that's why you need to hit them a little bit, but not just one after the other. The other. But actually, we've been at times, we've given them a little bit of everything, and they've laid there. There's one on a video with Sean Hyden, I can remember, and it was, uh, there were 750 yards, three of them. They laid down. And I had the decoy. Uh, oh, I think, I don't know if it was Elmo. I think it was Phoebe, the one that's sitting on her butt. <laughs> and I had her there. Elmo got the mange, kind of fell apart. But she was sitting out there. And I don't know if that was what it was, because they could see it. The sun was shining on it. But I said, Sean, let's just sit here, like, 10, 15 minutes. Just watch him. 
in about, I don't know, not even 10 minutes, they all got up by one, and two of them took off on a dead run. The other one watched them, then here the male, then here he comes. All the way up, and we got a double. Never did another sound yep. or nothing. So there's always something different too. I mean, yeah. So then, uh, so then after that, you know, then you know, no rabbit, and I do each one about ten minutes as a rule. But sometimes I'll sit there. Uh, in uh, after the rabbit, I'll even go back to stage one, just do some longer because coyotes move around. You know, yeah, they're out oh, especially yeah. in the morning. They're hunting their way now. Maybe earshot. You know, maybe they yep. haven't heard it yet. Yep. So yep, and then. Uh, so, but that, that pup distress just, <laughs> I ran that so much that everybody started doing it. Yeah. And now, and it just, and I, what I'm thinking, you know, Rick's got all these great sounds and stuff, but everybody's using them. And I, I know I have heard a few now complaining. They're having trouble calling them in because everybody's using them. Yep. You know, and all coyotes, they can't get educated. They're just a wild animal, but I don't know. It's just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they should yeah. pound them and pound them, you know. Oh, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't believe that. Do you, I, th I think coyotes for a hundred percent get educated. Oh, it's, yeah. It's I mean, terrible. shit. They, but I mean, you know, and you, well, we used to, when we had a good coyote population where I live, we still ain't back to normal. We don't have, as, we still have some mange, but what I like, especially when not that many were calling, you know, I was using these three stages and if I was sitting on this hill, the same draw, you know, where it always coyotes there, the plane can come shoot and every coyote in three days or just as many back in there. Yeah. Their favorite spots. Coyotes yep. have their favorite spots they like to be. Yeah. And uh, I would sit on this hill when the wind was this way. Well, the next time, I'd wait a couple of weeks. I'd go back and I'd go set on, use a different wind and set in a different place and do something different. Yep. You know, I don't know. Is that, is that wise? I don't know. I, ain't, I don't know. what I ain't a coyote. But it seemed like it worked that yep. way. But now... You know, I don't have very many places where I go now where somebody don't call anymore. Because a lot of the places I was going, well, their kid grew up. Now he's calling. Deer hunters come. They've seen video. They went, you know, <laughs> you know how it is. So it's hard to find just virgin coyotes. But the trouble is, you know, I don't know what the other guy did. Yep. You know, so I think that's one of the problems, too, we have is, you know, you don't know what the other guy's done that's already been there. And then, like I said, there's always new coyotes. So you can go, even though you've seen coyotes, they don't come. I, I'd still go back. How many times would you go back a year to one spot? Well, I mean, if I'm killing them or they show up every time, I'll go back as much as I can, you yeah. know, usually. Three yeah. times? Or more. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm. it was probably it was before I started filming, I was teaching school at Butte. It was in the 80s, right by on the right across from the Fort Randall Dam on Pickstown, you know, right over the the, the draw there. Mm -hmm. Those uh, they still had the haystacks. Do you, did yep. you guys coyote hunt when you had haystacks? Oh hell yeah, we climbed get, up on the yeah, haystack. Yeah, we were we'd get on them and just right. yeah yeah. So those I had Christmas vacation. Of course, you had about a week. Every night, right across from the Fort Randall Dam on the Nebraska side, I get on this haystack, big draw, nine mile gulch they called it. Come from Gross, Nebraska, and goes down through there. And I'd sit there, and I think it was six different nights in a row, called in a coyote every time, and uh, and then. Uh, one time, my brother, Troy, that had passed away with cancer, you know, he was 10 years younger than me, but, but he shot one, and he stood up and just looked, and there was a bobcat. He thought I heard some bobcat was climbing the stack from behind. Did he <laughs> get it? A, Did he get no, it? No, he couldn't. He was too shook up. He mm -hmm. missed it. He was running off for the tree. <laughs> yeah, but, oh, yeah. But, yeah, oh, no. I mean, and that's back when there was oh, so many coyotes. Yeah. Shoot. I mean, they were just thick, you know. So. I mean, you know, it depends what part of the country. If you're in Texas. Yes. I mean, we can go down, I mean, we got 26 one time. I mean, you couldn't even, I mean, it was hard to shoot them with shotguns. They're like they're starving, eating rocks or what they were doing down there. But down there, right, I was on, one of them was on, oh, I used to go to Vega, and then right out by New Mexico. I'd call coyotes from New Mexico into Texas. They have this big cap rock deal. And, and then, oh, Snyder, Texas, uh, 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 what's that one? Uh, hunt on that, uh briscoe ranch 1.3 million acres used to be the governor of texas had like 20 some miles of the rio grande we'd be sitting there and right across the river these little villages they were always playing mexican music you know the real mexican da, 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 yep. da, da. you could just hear what is that it was just that music the, all the long and loud speakers all them yep and then uh, there'd still be some illegal aliens nothing like now you'd see clothes and a bag here and there and we come across the older lady and a young younger gal was pregnant and they they got left and we gave them some water we weren't supposed huh. to but actually we were hunting there and <laughs> and uh, then we go at night we get oh we get eight nine during the day or so different then, was then, it different kind of country, like like brushy yeah the, the brush they were in your face when you're killing them. oh yeah yeah and there was a few openings but we go out at night then like 
like a lot of guys, stay in the back of the pickup. We didn't have nothing fancy. We were just using that shoot. I was howling them up. I was howling up coyotes right up to the pickup. I got the biggest kick out of that, you know. So were the coyotes down there? Smaller. Yeah. They're mangy. smaller. We call them mangy rats yeah. is what we call well, them. Well, they're just smaller. These were. I don't know. They didn't really have the mange, you know. How but did they the, act compared to like a South Dakota and Nebraska coyote? Well, I mean, they just. Dumber? They, they were jumping four feet over top of you. I mean, you had to. <laughs> It's just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> they, what would you say? Anyway? Yeah. Were they dumber down there than, than up here? Uh, well, yeah, it looked like it. They weren't <laughs> educated. <laughs> they were just Texas coyotes. Well, they'd always they say. They were dumber. They were always telling me. I went down there quite a few years, but they, they'd always tell me, you know, when they, they come, the, the outfitters, and put them pellets out for the deer. Yeah, yeah. The deer, turkey, everything would wait until the coyotes come and ate, and they'd leave, then they'd come in and get the rest. So. Really? Yeah. You never recorded any of that? No, I guess I never. What, what before? Was that during the middle of when you were doing your thing? With yeah, I would do it. Sometimes just did it for fun. So yeah. I recorded. There's some on Texas hunts on some of that. So what were you doing for, like, what was your day job when you were doing all this? Or was that what your no, job was? No, that's all I was doing. That's well, I it. spent all those videos. So I edited the videos for Primos. The TV shows and all them videos. I was all winter long editing mm. and then hunting some. So you were you were ed- you did a lot of editing to yourself. I did it all. Yeah, I don't even know what I was doing, but it was good enough. It's on the Outdoor Channel. Never had a lesson or nothing. Wow. Yeah, and Primos would put. I sent it down to Primos, and they put the bells and whistles on it. Yeah. Like the, you know, yep. The intro. Yep. The Primos tags and stuff. I got you. Yeah. Even his last couple TV shows, I did all the editing on it. Except they just put a little. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. No, I had for years. That's yeah. even cooler yet then yeah. because you yeah. filmed and then you edited. You didn't Still did sub it Randy out. Anderson. Hi, I'm Randy Anderson. Turn the camera on. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. That's uh, what I'm, what I got to see. What I have to see is that damn intro. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I got is the Verminator intro is what you said, right? Oh, yeah. I have just, to. I've never seen it. Oh, that's just pretty good. I want to see that coyote shot in the face. What's yeah. that? I want to see that coyote shot and I want, I want to try to mention a few people, you know, and I can't. I just don't want to leave anybody out, but, uh, you know, Glenn Zink, I mentioned him. and Zink calls? No, <laughs> Glenn Zink, the farmer right next to me. Okay, yeah, okay. I mean, he is just the nicest guy, and he do anything for anybody. And you get, you get, he He get, helped me on the first video. Yeah, he was quite a bit with how, me a lot. Like, like helping, like. Uh, just going with me. I got shooting you. Shooting him. Get, get yeah, he, he, shot, he shot the one with the bow that I kept saying. He shot the one with the pistols. 357, he shot one with a 22 mag. Okay. Yeah, and so he was in on all that, and he's so skeptical. He's one of these guys, I mean, like we I don't see, know if this I is going to work. I seen a mountain lion track, you know, and, oh, you did not. That's, like, way back. <laughs> so we're going, I said, they're around. They ain't either. And so that's just a bunch of baloney. So we're going down this little trail, <laughs> and oh, it's kind man. of a dusty two-wheel along the Kippaw River, and I'm looking down here, and there's no snow. It's like a winter like this, dusty, and there was a track, like, that big, course there was no like dog track it wasn't clawed yeah it was a, it was i don't know i don't know what else it'd be you know and then he wouldn't believe me that i was he'd always called coyotes too i mean and and i moved in there uh about 97 probably and so he got to help me on a couple years before i come out with the first one and uh, he wouldn't believe i'd call in a coyote well i can see me you know maybe they might how i don't know whatever but anyways we're in a million, but not, it's to have to be right before dark or something. Got, yeah. So we were along the Kippar River, and it was like two in the afternoon, kind of warmer day in January or something, I, February. And I howled, you can hear right on the video, these two coyotes pair howled down on the river, and you hear him go, well, I'll be darned, he goes. <laughs> he answered. So I called him up, and he shot one with that twenty two pistol. So Glenn, the- he helped a lot. And then Sean, Sean Hyden, he's still, we're going next week for a, benefit if the weather works out these guys the syc chapter in nebraska the special youth challenge for kids that are handicapped in wheelchairs we we don't i donate a hunt used to every year and the money goes to the that chapter well iowa started one and we've been three years trying to get this done something always comes up i think we're going next year but sean hyden you heard of the caddyshack movie yeah bill murray so you know where picks down south Dakota is yep fort randall dam there's a golf course there and I golfed there from Butte quite a bit and went over there. But they wanted me to build a couple lakes on there and some tee pads for women and stuff. So um, <clears throat> so I was over there looking at it, and here come this guy in his cart, golf cart. And he had his bow in there. And, he's, he, and it turned out it was Sean Hyden. I, I didn't know him. 
he was from Bassett originally, but he was living over there. And he, he was the original Bill Murray because he was shooting gophers because he shoots at everything, anything. And he's always shooting stuff. He shoots more than anybody I ever know. He shoots bird. I mean, anything. It's feral. I mean, if it's sitting here, he's going to shoot. Anyways, so he said, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm the greenskeeper. I went to call. Really? Yeah. You know, I just watched your video. Let's do, oh, you want to go hunting? Well, I got some place we could go, and that's where that started. And of course, he's been with me ever since. So, and then he helped me get some of the sounds that we've got. Sean helped a lot on some of them and stuff. And then um, Dave Tatum, Dave and Steve. Um, Dave, I was at the, they had the, the what do they call that, magazine? Oh, is in out of Pierce, South Dakota. Yep, I remember that. The, not vermin. Uh, it's something like the varmint. Cut, varmint. Varmint. Something. It, it was where that shooting range is in Fort Pierce. Yeah, right and there. they had every year they had a a little get together at the Ram Cody Inn in uh, Varmint Mass. No, I ain't. Yeah, I know what you're talking about though. But anyways, yeah. Think. But guys would come from you know a lot of them like like woodchuck shooters from Vin- from Virginia and different ones would come to that and and uh, anyways uh, I had a booth there and I think I gave a little seminar and. And Dave Tatum was a, you know, Dave, right? Yeah. Somebody, yeah yep. Steve, I, 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 I've talked to him on Facebook and then Steve, like I said, he yeah. was out with, he shot an elk out here and then his buddy shot a bull yeah. a couple of years ago north. But, yeah. uh, and uh, Steve was one with Jimmy Primo's guiding us, you know, when I was about my three stages of calling deal. And anyways, uh, so I was at that, that show there and I think I did a seminar and then I come back and then pretty soon old Dave and Steve was like sixth grade or something, fifth, he's standard as a little guy. And Dave, you know, ah, I seen your video. I'm a state trapper out of Murdo and all this. I said, well, get together. Yep. So then that's, I was Dave. I went a lot with Dave all over. And I learned, I mean, state trapper, you're going to yeah. learn. I learned about denning and stuff. And then yep. he's actually the first guy I was ever with that blew, actually blew a diaphragm howler. And yep. he used a single reed one. It was a turkey one from, oh, I can't think of it. I don't know if it was a night in hail or start with an H, can't think of it. But anyways, you know, man, that sounds pretty good. And the guys were answering it. So then I kind of started doing that too because of Dave. And then, but man, we, you know, we had a lot of good hunts. He's on a lot of my videos, Dave Tatum and Steve, as he got older. And then uh, Russ Wentworth, he's out of Springview, you know, where, where I am from now. Is that is Springview yeah. is just east of Valentine? Yeah, about 50 miles straight south of Cologne. Okay. Springview, gotcha. just yep. across the border, yep. not too far. Yep. But Russ, see, I was doing, I really, to be honest, I don't care if I call in a bobcat. I'm just mostly coyote. If one comes in, I guess. But to target them, set there forever, it's so stinking boring. That's the same thing. <laughs> and, I just and usually you're killing a coyote before a cat comes yeah, in. Yeah, a lot like, of times. But I mean, you know, and they're, they're pretty dumb, actually. Yeah. They can see. Yeah. But I mean, I've had them like, like, like right here. Yeah. Right there, come around a cedar tree and you just look at you. You're set. Don't bother them. Yep. I don't know how many times I look around, get up, and there's one standing right here to them sheds. You know, yeah. Just, so, and Fox, they're all right. But, I mean, I, it's just so much more fun to call in a – but, uh, but anyway, Russ had a lot of good ground for bobcats. So, Primos, you know, we kind of wanted to show people, you know, we call bo- with the call. So, and then Sean, too, we, we did a lot of bobcat calling. So, Russ Wentworth from Springview. And, then of course, I talked about Rick, the verminator. So yeah. That, that's one to make sure there. So, yeah. but anyways, but still, you know, when I'm calling, it's, it's just every – what's so neat about coyotes is every – Time it's different almost, you know, not every, not every time, but there's always it, it, something it, a little different and you learn even now. I still, geez, I didn't know a coyote would do that. Yep. Or, you know, it's, that's kind of funny, you know, it's, so. that's, what's makes it the sport. So, so awesome. We talk about exactly what you're saying all the time. It, we, th- there's, you, you get, I, and I've guaranteed you get it all the time <clears> asking <throat> what, what sounds to use, what are you using now? How do you use it? There, there's been times where we'll call in and kill a double or a single or a triple and then we'll move a couple miles away and, and we'll use something completely different and still be successful. I mean, there's just, there's no rhyme or reason. It's every single, every single set, everything's just different. That's what makes it so right. much interesting. It's not like, like you are talking about a buck, you know, buck deer walking down the trail right underneath your tree stand. They're going to do that. Yeah. A deer is going to almost do that every, every time. Coyotes are so unpredictable. It's just yeah. so much more fun. But I would say like a deer or, t- or like say a deer, you know, it's just God's plan. He don't want everything killed. Yep. And like, I've I've rattled and grunted lots of deer, but they'll be out there like just out of bow range. Several come by and they won't even look at you. 
Then all of a sudden, here comes one, you grunt, and he comes right up to your tree. Why is that? How come they don't all do that? Yep. Same way with coyotes. Yep. yep. Same way. Just the way it is. Yep. Have you got a, have you, over the past years, got a lot of flack from anti, anti-hunters? Well, I did anti- on this post. I put on, I got some. <laughs> on this post? Well, well, I put up to watch on live. Yeah. yeah I, I hit a couple, three of them. Yeah. Really? They're mainly, mainly foreigners. Oh, I got yeah, you. You know, yeah, but. But I mean, but you, no, I never had a whole lot. No, not, not a really. whole. Have you? Do you do some stuff on online like YouTube, other than Facebook? Do you do? Or I mean, is is Facebook pretty much a platform where you? Post well, it? I kind of started, but then Primo shut me off because they have their own channel. But like I say, you know, it's just like the least thing they do, and they put not much action. So on with it. your affiliation with Primos, you can't have your own YouTube channel. They didn't want me to. Not really. Oh, that's a bummer. Yeah, and they aren't doing much with it. But gosh dang, maybe that's they a, will now that the new calls come out. But you know, I called in a mountain lion. And, uh, you know, they, they finally put it on her like four years after I did it. <laughs> did you, get, did you, did you we kill could, it or couldn't shoot it? Okay. You know, like I got you. But, but yeah, still. I just come right in. I had three coyotes coming and it was pup distress, the third stage at the end. And they were coming hard, but one by one, they stopped and it would, it would turn and leave. And then, uh, finally the guy with me, Gary Hausman was with me and the landowner kind of nodded me. There's a, I don't mind sitting there right across. It was a frozen, this is a stock pond like around here, about that much ice and just sitting on his butt, had his peg washing his. And how far, how far away? Oh, 150 maybe. Oh, you could have had him smoked. Then. Oh yeah. Then I put on a little fawn soft, but he'd already seen we were there, you know, and was he, he took off. It was kind of cool. He was running and I noticed that's on video. I get him going for running hard. His tail, you know, we're thinking it just stayed parallel with the ground. I don't know if you've ever noticed, seen it. I haven't. Maybe it was just noticed. that one, but it was kind of cool. His tail just kind of stayed right parallel with the ground. I want to get, we, in South Dakota here, we can get yeah. landowner tags right. for mountain lions. Oh, I know. So, or that little white when I was driving in here. Man, there's got to be some around we, He He killed two bobcats this year, which we've been trying to get out of, figure out a ratio where we'll kill one bobcat <laughs> for every, now it's about every 250 coyotes for one bobcat. Uh-huh. Just because we're, we're, we're we're killing a coyote and then we're all right we're out of here and going to the next right. set well what this is the first year we've killed a bobcat in five years four years yeah it's yeah. been quite a while which is one cat for every a lot of coyotes but we you know you'd think here we'd eventually come across a mountain lion which we have i i got one here north about four four miles straight north of us but i want to get one on video I, I want it, but it's just I, it's such oh, it a so. Forever. I tell you, uh, Sean Hyden and Russ Wentworth, when we had like no coyotes, I mean, there was times we were going forty some sets before we even called in a coyote or anything. Is this down down where you? Yeah, right, Springview, Nyberg oh River, and oh, the Kippewa geez, River. I've had is the coyotes is. were so few. It was that area has been hit hardest the mange. Boyd County and Kip Hall County, Nebraska, like where I was from, Butte, Springview, and Sp- that area, they still got mange. I mean, it's still in places, and it's just, I don't know what the deal is. But, yeah, I think more than one, I think Russ Wentworth and I went 30-some stands, and Sean and I went like 42 or three stands, never right in great spots, never even called in a coyote. That's interesting. That, that just finally goes a bobcat. To- we got a bobcat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But that goes to tell guys right there, just because you see what you do, I mean, it's just, there's a lot of time involved that is not success. Yeah, and it's just like life. You don't give up. You know? yep. Some guys go yep. out and they're, you know, which is four, well, I'll shoot, that ain't, that ain't no fun. Well, you got to stick with it, you know. Which it's good for us. I yeah. mean, it's good. <laughs> like like even this year, you know what's going to hurt a lot of guys this year is everybody, as soon as that those coyote prices, like the few, past few years, 50 to a hundred dollar coyotes. Everybody wants to be a professional coyote killer because you can fill your tank up on one kill. Right. This year when you're getting $6 average, that's, there's a lot of guys that are going to be turned down from hardcore guys. They don't exactly. The hardcore guys are just going to keep on keeping on. And that's, that's, that's right. Uh, the, the stuff that you went over on your, on your Mm -hmm. specific sets. So with your phases, you're you're averaging what thirty minutes a set then if you yeah, go yeah and 10. then I'll stay there's times I've stayed almost fifty minutes or better and we're the same same way there'll, there'll be times where I'm sitting back and if you have a kid with you or something like my little guy it's like fishing if you're not catching fish you're just gonna bore them out they're gonna be they're not gonna want to go fishing next time 
But if you're there and you're hunting and you've got, you know, if you have movement within or, or something responding within 10 minutes, but I, I will sit there. I've sat there for well over an hour oh, and, yeah. and I guarantee you killed, called a coyote in that yeah. probably didn't hear it, but he moved right. into the area yeah. or he just hit the right note. Yep. Hit the right every thing. Every once in a while. That's all it takes. What do you, what's one of your, what's your, what's one of the most important things that you would say to a lot of these guys out there nowadays that are, uh, not only new hunters, maybe newer generational kids or guys that want to do it, that are, you know, with the ease of access to information online that just want to have an easy way out. What's some, what's your words of advice to, to new guys in the sport that well, want to, I think the biggest thing that people don't understand, like, you know, unless you've gone with somebody that knows what they're doing is the wind part on the coyote. That's the whole, I mean, yeah, it takes something to get them in, but so many people they set together and, you know, and especially in out East where it's a little more cover and stuff, you know, they just imagine all the coyotes out here. We see, I see coyotes circling at quarter, half a mile. Yeah. Yep, we Clear see. around, you know, and you have to actually get up. I know several times yeah. we get up with the camera, get up with the camera, yep. keep going around, go across in 200 yards, set up again, you know, and you just imagine how it in, a, in thicker cover. You that know. you don't even see. No, and so you've got to put a guy, always have the collar, the electronic collar upwind, even in the thicker stuff, you know, and then I would say, though, you know, there's times I used to call down in the, you know, all my videos look like it's so wide open because, well, the film, you got to be where you can get them on film. <laughs> you know, you're in the trees. It's so hard to get. And, uh, but yeah, I would say though, we used to, before I started film, like the CRP kind of started and stuff in the early eighties and stuff. And there were so many coyotes in the CRP. We just get out there where, where it was wind blew it down a little bit and then find where them game trails were, yep. just get a shotgun, just aim it right they always coyotes oh you know coyotes always come on trails you can be out in a wide open like these hills you got here real rolling but wherever the cow the cow trails are going to a windmill or a dam you've seen them cows coming a dead run set right at you they're following that trail you know they one after the other they follow the trail so just you hear them coming and same way in like heavier cover deer hunting carrot your bow hunting territory get where the trails all come together there's a main trail and just set off it a little bit and don't call so much just so you can hear them. But the old shotgun there, I mean, it could be a rifle. You know, you're going to shoot them at 20 yards or something. But, I mean, you can still get them in and get the wind right and everything. But That's what so. you're thinking. The, so what you would say to a lot of the new guys is just the, get the, the wind, wind right. Yep. yep. And then don't over call. I mean, that's kind of a pet peeve of mine. Because I know you see a lot of the, you know, uh, guys, you know, with, the companies have electronic collars. Of course, they want to sell them. They just let it run, let it run. Well, where the coyotes are dumb, yeah, they got a three hundred thousand acre ranch you're calling on somewhere in Montana or Oregon or somewhere. You know, you can do about anything almost and get a coyote in. You know, so but but as they get educated, that's always you know what I always thought. Well, if a rabbit's getting killed by something, say a hawk's got it, and it, you know you want to make it sound like it got away and it catches again or a you know something like that. Make it sound a little more realistic. Maybe it don't make that much difference because I know I've, you know, you can call them in with a thing running, but as they get smarter, I think you can't call as much yeah. with rabbit. I don't. You know, first time through, I'll give her a good 40, 50, and pan it around, you know, good and stuff. Then wait a little bit. Next time, a little shorter, and then, you know, a little shorter. And shoot, like my very first coyote I called in, I called, you know, what, I, 40 seconds. He's over a quarter of a mile or more, probably more than that, half a mile away just kept disappearing ended up 10 yards in front of me they know right where you are yeah you know. it's crazy that a lot yeah. of people don't yeah you you can make one little sound and they can be a long ways away and they just pinpoint exactly yeah. another thing you know i thought of with hand calls so cool you know is that lip squeaking them in you know that's oh that's so much fun you know once you get the jump on them you see them coming get that gun up and just you just can't believe how they hear that bobcat whatever they're just coming right at your gun with the electronic collar. You got it out there. And they're not coming at you. They're coming at that, which sometimes makes it tough to get them. They get too close to it. They're coming too hard. You can't stop, and they smell it. And then they're really going, you know. Yep. Yeah, And but that when you can control, you know, from that, that's always a, a great deal there too. So, But, yeah, I would say just try not to overcall and, you know, and, uh, and one pro, you know, I always at the seminars – a lot of times, you know, people wait too long to start. 
because they want to do it after deer season. But, you know, they're easier to call in, you know, earlier, October. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway. Oh, yeah. But, you're, you're you know, ahead. but I mean, it's going, you know, because now you got guys walking to their tree stands and all that, you know, and so it's guns going off and rifle season, you know, so, but, you know, try it a little earlier. But now everybody's going a year round pretty much. The hardcore guys never stop. They're out there in the dark and what's when it's uh, cooler and stuff. So. What, so let's, there's th- a couple, a few things. You so you designed Is that my phone? Yep, you don't, here I got it. Here, let me do this okay. real quick. I already got mine off. Yeah, just just hit the red right Oh, it's done. Okay. <laughs> Should have answered it. Um, yeah. on my wife. On you your guys still talking about yeah. <laughs> yeah, look on Facebook. You're we are stop in winter and get get some something for me. Stop at Grossenberg's. Yeah. Give me a new tractor, <laughs> new backhoe. <laughs> uh you um so you designed Four calls with Primos. You have the Alpha Dog, or you have the the Little Dog, the Hot Dog, the Kai, the Kai, and then the Dual Read. Right. Oh. And are you you are in helping develop the elect the new electronic call? Do you have? Yeah, any- I was the first time, and then they, you know, I I helped a lot with that, and then uh, they'd send me the prototype and everything. We got everything ready, like I said, this fall, and then. Went to order a bunch of them, and the components were six months out. Can you say anything about that call or not really right now? Oh, yeah. I Is mean, there anything that you want to or not oh, really? Oh, I don't know. I, uh, I've uh, We've showed it. It was on the show, actually, in January. I'm sure some, some of them seen it. It's, it's about the bigger one. It's about this big, and it's got three legs, adjustable, and uh, it's 360. Okay. Yeah, I won't say what kind of speakers. There's yep. speakers that nobody's are using that I know of. Yep. Amp and everything and the software, it's all I think it's n- new at last I knew. And uh, and uh, uh I'll just say it's loud and it sounds really good. <laughs> What's what are you what are they looking at price range? Uh I think this is about 600 for okay. this one. And then the next size down, it'd be more like alpha dog size. Yep. And uh it's 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 going to be one speaker short of the other one, and a couple and, hundred bucks, hundred yeah, couple hundred less. And it's round. It's like a paint can or a bigger paint can, the bigger one, and it has three three speakers, and then you can shut one of them off. Yep. So if you don't want it coming back at you, you can. Yeah. And then the other one's the same. And there's all this. It's a Wolfer. The big one's got a Wolfer. So yeah. Sweet Home Alabama sounds pretty good. Oh, really? Bass is kicking up dust. Really? And yeah. Bluetooth, your phone. You can play any song you want. But it does come with a remote. Oh, yeah. And yeah the, I mean, and, you, and the remote runs all the callers. You don't need three remotes. Okay. Yeah. That's a few things. Okay. I don't know if I'm supposed to say that or not. But maybe yeah. my contract won't be renewed. <laughs> no, I'm sure it will. But there's some other things that are pretty cool about it. Yeah. So. What a. What's something personally that you've been seeing, and I would say no holds barred, just unfiltered in the past 10 years or maybe even the whole lifespan of what you've been doing since you started calling till now, some of the the cons, some, some of the things in the industry that you don't agree with. And I don't care if it's somebody like us that are, is doing something different or somebody that that you have done that you might not have liked what what are i mean i don't want to put you on the spot yeah, but is there, is there anything in the 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 whole industry that you might not see a certain trend that you like oh i think just i think it's just the 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 you know i don't watch a lot every once in a while stuff pops up on youtube and i'll watch different ones celebrities and stuff i just just the, the fact that it's too serious I think, you know, everybody needs to be a little more, have fun with it, laugh, and, and uh, you know, not, not and like I said before, not try to act like you're the only one that can call a coyote. Nobody knows what you know, you know, and I think other than that, I don't think nothing else really bothers me much that way, I don't think. What do you but, see uh, in some of the good, like, what, what do you, what do you like that's, that's kind of going towards, I mean, are, is there certain things even in the whole hunting industry that you're seeing that, that's kind of getting your attention or um or turning you off in certain ways i mean i don't oh, like I don't, what, personally, I don't know then like it's like watching outdoor and channel it's always seems like one guy you know that's highlighted so much you know and uh on not all of them but some of them you know and that 
I'm not, you know, it's just like it's one one I'm dude shooting, being a yeah, he's shooting everything he can find, and uh, and uh, he's got guy I know for sure. I mean, being with Primos, and I know what stuff I hear. You know, the ones that are paying guys to find them the big muley, the big yep, whitetail. Yep. They won't go until they got one located. Just That's, stuff like that. Yeah, you know? I would same thing. I yeah. agree. Like I would have. Well, I don't. I don't really have, I mean, unless I just kind of bitch a little bit about contest hunters, you know, I mean, that's, that's, that's oh. no big deal. Nothing, nothing at all. Cause it's, it's word of the point where there's so many nitpickers in the whole, in the whole realm of predator mm-hmm. hunting. You know, we've said it before where you have guys that are public ground hunters, guys that are public, that are private mm-hmm. ground hunters, guys that are contest hunters, guys that are like us that just go out and enjoy it. That, 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 that like have, to get, you have guys that just, don't have the land to do it. Do yes. It, the way we call. You yep. can't, they just don't. They don't have the no, accessibility to yeah, it. Yeah, West Virginia. Or, I mean, like, say, Kentucky, Tennessee, they can't go out and get 2,000 acres. They got to call. They got two spots. They can only call all year long. You yep. know? And there's and, the, and guys like that live vicariously through guys like you and us. They, they, they just, that's what they do. They watch videos yeah. Of stuff that they won't be able to do. Yeah, even like I get a lot of guys watching from foreign countries. I'm sure you do yeah. too. Yeah. They don't even have coyotes or fox or nothing, but they just think it's the coolest thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> they just, do you hunt a lot of public gl- uh, ground or mainly private? Oh, I have like New Mexico, you know, and uh, Arizona. You know, I've had, I've hunted a lot of that uh, reservation ground and you know, in different kind. Yeah, down south, but up oh, here, you know, I I would say there, you know. My brother used to live in Farmington, New Mexico, before he passed away. But there's some videos with him, Troy, down there. And and uh, we found out first thing, you walk the next set. You don't go do the off the road, the trail. Yeah. You go the next set. Just get go f- twice as far as you normally would walk. Just a whole new deal. Yep. Completely yep. different. Wait, wait, then go if you want to walk another one. <laughs> and it's a, yeah, another half mile or whatever. So that that was always work. Seemed like. You've never done you've never done anything contest wise then really. Well, I got us that's another story. <clears throat> I, um, do you know the Galloway boys? Yeah, from Valentine I do. Even and yep. uh, I, I I've dealt with yeah. Gary Gary, which he yeah, passed, right, he, yeah. which is a little bit yeah. But uh, see, they were Keevan was in lock, stock, and barrel. You know, he'd been there out of, about out of high school in Valentine. You know, and they were selling a lot of my stuff and had a catalog out and stuff. But him and Aug used to go to the Cabela's contest at Sydney. I don't know if they even have it anymore, but they used it went for quite a few years. And they'd about win it every time. What you do, you take your regular two man team, like you two guys or whatever, you go down there. But to keep it honest, <laughs> they put a rep like the tree stand guy with you, or, you know, or the dog collar guy or whatever, just to go guys that wanted to go and to keep you kind of honest. Well, I go down there and I'm hunting with two young guys in their early twenties. That their dads are about as high up as Cabela and Cabela as you can get that aren't their last name's not Cabela. Yeah. But, I mean, and and uh, so we get ready to do the rules. Of course, you can't split up, and you uh, you know, and all, all the rules you got, they've got to be called in, and this and that. So we go to meet, and he goes, "Well, you ride the one kid. You two go up, drive about fifty minutes up here. He's going to drop you off at this ranch." They don't care. Just go into Kron's. They'll probably be in bed. Get their mule out, hunt on their ranch, and this, he's going to go over here. And then about three o'clock, you're going to meet and call for the other spot. So that was cheating right there. So where's the other guy? Well, we that's back. Maine was really bad. This was early 2000s, and and uh, only thing I did, I called in the neighbor, the neighbor's dogs, and that was all. I never seen a coyote track, nothing. The other guy about the same way. We got together, and I think we did call one coyote. Or we seen one leaving. We walked in too far, and one left. We got nothing. So we get back there, and uh, the guy hadn't showed up. You know, I don't know where he's at. And they started announcing. The, and our team got second place. He shot nine off the off the Sydney feedlot dead pile. <laughs> That's so a then, good idea. <laughs> yeah, so I told Keevan about that. Him and Og never, ever went to another one. And so then we found out. Uh, like a few days later, them guys said, well, we got second only because the guys that won it got 14. They finally got up in a helicopter and shot the rest. <laughs> so, so that was my only contest deal. That's what, that's kind of what, as soon as you involve money or some yeah. kind of publicity, it seems like, uh, which is, it is how it takes every, my, the, the things that we're getting into is just, 
it, it's to the point where there's hunters and there's anti-hunters. And if you, you're complaining about all sorts, it's, it's getting crazy. I mean, yeah. that's why I kind of was wondering if you had antis get hounding you at all or doing. We, Not we, really. We, if you, if you're every you, once in a while, I get some, you, oh, somebody just tell me where to stick it. And then that's about it. And then I never hear from them again. YouTube is terrible. Yeah. That's social media. YouTube yeah. is just, I would think on Facebook though, with some, but you said you haven't posted a whole, you have 150 some thousand followers. That's crazy. That's yeah. a lot of followers on Facebook. I would think that would be a whole nother. Well, I was putting out after I did the videos, I was putting up hunts cause no, Primos didn't want to do videos anymore. So you know, I need money in it. Nobody's watched. So I was just putting the hunts every three, four days. I had a lot of hunts hadn't used from Canada. Oh, Wooly, that's another guy I got to yeah. mention. Yeah, from Canada, Wooly. yeah. The old, I figured he'd be over. He's a Ukrainian. I figured he'd be over sniping. Oh, what's his name? Oh, well, we called I him the Saskatchewan know. sniper. Oh, Wooly, yep. Yeah. How's he but, doing? All right. Yeah. Is he? Yeah. Is he up in Canada? Is that? Yeah, he's in Saskatchewan. Yeah. I got you. Yeah, I mean, some of the my best hunts are up there. You know, it's just crazy. Kite, how big's the biggest kite you shot up there? They they're the same size as ours. Really? They just look big because Willie's not very tall and bow-legged, and he holds them <laughs> up. And, and their guard hairs are, like, man, just all oh, awesome. Like, they're beautiful, you know, white, really white, most of them. Yeah. Yeah, well, I just posted on them. We shot, well, it was over 400 coyotes I've shot with him up there. Wow. Filming, filming over the years. Filming, that and is. All a, on that's film. That's jeez. Yeah. That's a lifetime Triples, for. Do you still go up there and hunt with him? I haven't since the COVID, but I'm going to yeah. go this we get the well. I haven't gone at all, mainly, like you, mainly because I have nothing new to sell. So I haven't. Primos ain't filming me or nothing, because you know we want to have. Primos wants a product to sell. I mean to film. That's why you film. Yeah. You know anymore? You're not getting any money for a video. So you got to you know. So they'll pay my way. We're 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 getting it lined up for this fall with a new collar. But yeah, but it's just that's just fun up there. It's so easy to find a place to set. You know, around it, here, you go, man, where can we sit? It's just, yeah. There's just so just perfect rock piles in yep. every field, every field with little trees, volunteers growing out of them, park right behind with a pickup, walk right walk there, 20 yards and sit down. That's awesome. Yeah. A lot of coolies, deep draws and stuff. See, South Cashman, a lot of it is, is uh, flat, but where Woolies at, there's two different ridges of hills, big, pretty big hills. Man, it's just perfect for coyote hunting. What are you finding up there, education-wise, for coyotes? Do you, are, are, is there a well, lot? Well, I sell my calls forty miles from his house. Yeah, and then at the airport, I mean, in Saskatoon, there's the oh, I forget what they call it. Walmart. Every Walmart up there sells my calls. And, so yeah. it's not any different than down here. No, but they're not. Canadians aren't quite into it. They've got such mule deer and huge. Yeah. White, the world record at Milo Hanson Whitetail was shot in only like. Less than an hour from all these houses. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, they're so, they're into the big game a little more. But when the prices are up, you know, when they're, when they're like 70, 80 bucks here, they're high 100s up there yeah. usually. Yeah. And then they start running snowballs with, you know, run over with snowmobiles and all yeah. that, you know. But, That's what we dread here, a, yeah. a two foot snow because it's yeah. the same thing. Yeah. And some guys don't do it for money just because it's fun. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's what, yeah, that's exactly. We, I want to get a snowmobile just so I can make it up tracks for them so they can get away on a on a compressed snowmobile track right. but we've been lucky with no snow but oh wally he's made some shots man i mean he never shoots he's got a 2250 that primos gave him you know and <coughs> it's a oh i think it's got to be i started filming with him like well i forget how many years it's been but anyways it sets in his closet and it's the bull barrel it's a savage the varmint one yeah and it's a 26 inch barrel heavy he likes it heavy and then he's got that big old honking scope with the extender on it heavier and all get out but he likes it heavy dra drags that thing around and he wasn't even using shooting sticks for years finally he kind of likes the the bipod trigger stick because yep. he's short they're too short for me and the tall ones are too too long for me so that's why i use something else but anyways so but man i'm telling you they if they're 300 yards are dead i mean use the only time he misses is like the first one Cause he hasn't shot all year, so when I come that morning, he goes picks me up at the airport, and he he's got a grill on his deck, and he's got a about a hundred yard little fence out there, and he hangs a target on her, and he takes a couple three four shots. Oh, it might be a hair to the right, so I'll move it one click to the left, and that's good. He's good. Yeah. Then he's murder mode. 
Yeah, I mean, he, I filmed him shooting one, you know, of course, anymore. It's not that big, but he shot one over 700, you know, off a rock. Really? No, just Did you record any of that? Oh, yeah. Got him shot. All of them, yeah. He shoots a lot of them, three, 400 yards for fish. Sean Hyden, too. He shoots. I filmed Sean shooting that one right around 1,000, laying down with a 243 Ackley off a short bite pod. Really? You yeah. filmed that, too? Oh, yeah. Do yeah, you have, have you posted that stuff anywhere? Yeah, it's been on a TV. It was on a Primo's TV show, I think. And yeah, it's on. It's on YouTube somewhere. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting, Sean too. Sean shot a lot of them, too, you know, five, 600 yards and stuff. That's a, that's yeah. a, we're, we try to get them as close as we can, but. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I like to do, but sometimes. So are they, range, are you ranging that and they're like, yeah, dope and stuff, or are they? No, it's guessing. just range them and in back, we were just, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Guess and shoot. Yeah. Well, you were not hitting them all then, but now yeah. it's a little easier. Yeah, they got the, yeah. they got a lot of it just holds over. Yep. Sean, I think anymore he's using the clicks and yep. stuff. But yeah, dialing up yeah. and or using some kind of holdover. Yeah, over. and he's a little more into the wind and stuff. He's 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 shot a few competitions, I think. You know, he's, Sean has a little bit. But like I said, he shoots more than anybody ever know. He's got more stinking shells and reloads and all that. That that's what it that's what it helps. I know that yeah. it helps. Yeah, that's a. Um, well, what I, th I would say, you know, one thing Sean does, and I do too, and I think, I don't know, one thing, when if a coyote don't come that set, there's a rock out there, three, 400 yards, or a little patch of snow. Do you guys do that before you get Sometimes. Up? Especially with the suppressors. You know, you're not hurting so much. You know, just take a shot every once in a while, and the other guy watches. Yeah, and that's a good way to practice a long shot too so we're we're kind of in a little bit different spot right here where if you if if it wasn't snowing out or all the deck the balcony was all covered we have yeah. uh, we have targets like from here out to about 1300 yards mm -hmm. and it's we just lay right here and shoot so it's it's i know what you mean it, yeah. you got to have a place to do it and a little bit of right. equipment but um there was a couple other things i was going to ask too on that i can't remember on that call on the electronic. electronic you said it's going to be out in a few months be out they say fall yeah early you, fall. somebody needs to you need to monetize your facebook page you need to have somebody i mean obviously i'm not telling you You're what the to man. do you you need the, you'll I, get a cut you'll give you a cut I, i'll i'll help you i'll help you because do. you have a hundred what are you the the amount of footage that you have compiled over <clears> the past 20 years yeah. how much of that would you say you've posted on facebook just, I've only posted what, since I quit making videos. So you have all videos that aren't, they don't have any NDAs, no dis, non-disclosure, no no binding contract saying you can't post those somewhere else now. I don't so, think so, no. But but they're on, but do you have them accessible on some kind of a... They're just on uh, DVDs. So they're only on DVDs. You don't have them somewhere I on a... save that there'd be tape. They'd be on tape cameras. Yeah. Uh, so on the stuff that you have recorded digitally that's on your computer, mm -hmm. how much of that have you posted on Facebook? Probably about everything by now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I was going to say, because when you start doing that, somebody will help, or I could help you. You 150, yeah, that, posting videos, that's a lot of publicity on there. I would almost say, too, gosh, with what you're doing. We talked to Les, and Les was surprising to me. He he didn't, he goes, I James, I don't have any interest in doing a, a youtube channel at all which certain like i mean you you guys gosh dang, he that's had, a, didn't he have one everything outdoors he he did but he something. just said he goes i just mm -hmm. he's wasn't really in in it, he just didn't want to post on there he goes i'm just i don't really want to i just don't i don't want to where a lot of guys i mean i can see obviously it's ultimately your decision mm -hmm. but there's so many guys like when we were when i made a little post about you there everybody's like yes yes you know you less the guys that that were in it you know you've been in it for so long and so many people are entertained and so many people look up to what you do and so many people more importantly have been educated by what you do people thrive on that and they want to see more but you get to a point like i, I don't have you get burned out have you got burned have you got to a point oh, it's kind of nice uh just get a little break since we had to wait for these new callers. So I, I haven't filmed at all this year. I did very little last year. I did a little bit with them new call. Actually, Primos, we thought it was coming out last fall. So we did a show. It hasn't aired from Oklahoma. We went down there with the boss and 
I call them in. Them guys shoot at them with the prototype. Shoot call. at them. Yeah. Shoot, shoot. So, but so a you, different deer. Hunting. That was another question too. You <laughs> you don't you you film most of the stuff with yeah, the call. anymore. I'm not. I'm, I mean, they're the thing is now. Primos is going to start sending a cameraman. I got you. So, what are so, you going to be just calling? Or are you going to be? If you want to film it, I'll film. I'll hundred <laughs> percent come film. If you if you're close yeah. and you want to, I'll take yeah. that. All hundred. All you got. You got my number. Yeah. I will. Um, but are you going to be shooting then? Me some I do some, you know that's the only drawback in all this. I just never, I was always running camera, trying to direct traffic, you know, trying to call, film me, call and turn yep. around. When did you go bro, bro, now? You know, wait, 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 wait. Zoom in on yep. the second one. Wait, okay, boom. You know. Now you're having to think: Is yeah. this guy doing what he should be doing on the camera? Yeah. If you're shooting, the, or right. do you have a preference? Of, you, I mean, obviously you like to call. Oh, I like you, to shoot, but, but I mean, I've got such a kick over, you know, these guys, you know, you go out with, uh, I used to go to the hash knife ranch quite a bit, Jared Coger and Ed Coger and all down in Southern Kansas, you know, they got huge bucks down. It's 42,000 acres, only bow hunted for deer. And they get like, you know, eight, nine, 10,000 for a bow hunt. It's just ridiculous. But I get, they, I get to go down there and I call coyotes. I used to go down there like three times a year. But I was letting them guys shoot, and they're just ranchers, you know. <laughs> just so many wreck I go, more. Yeah, I go now, Jared. How's your gun shooting? Well, stop. He just stopped me and put it on the mill and aim for a uh, on the mirror. And realized went on aim at a cow, cow pie, and he'd shoot like the, over oh. here. You know, oh, I'll just hold low and left. Then we go. You know, it was pretty <laughs> funny. Of course, people <laughs> like watching it. I've got one. It's on uh, with Jared and the the shooting instructor in Kansas for the state highway patrol and he had some wildcat thing i never heard of so we went down it's on it's the last hunt on the mastering yard 2 video i'm sure some of you seen it but i call it it's one of the greatest call jobs ever we're look i howled in like almost two miles almost there's a pile of yuccas and i, I can just barely see him i had 15 power like a and so jared uh binoculars and you could just barely see him her head's going up you know I called and howled and howled at them, and finally here they they made a circle. And there's a big ridge, probably 800 yards in front of us, and it took 20 minutes for them to pop that ridge, and another 20 minutes for me to get them up within 90 yards. And Jared was shooting. What's that Chinese thing? Uh, the, uh, AK, uh, SKS. Yeah, no scope. Oh, and go boom, boom, boom. It was uh, 16 or no 26. I can't remember how many shots the, between the both of them. And finally, he got out there almost about the farthest, and Jared did hit him in the back foot. So, he, you oh, know, geez. as he went up and he laid down, this happened to be the neighbor's land across the fence that we couldn't go on. We seen him lay down, crawled in a hole up there. But it was. Uh, <laughs> That's some of the stuff that people oh, just yeah. said. Oh, I just had so much of that down there. They're great guys. I get, it's fun going down there. But I did, I would say, two years ago, I always take somebody with me. You know, Sean Hyden, Glenn Zink, Russ Wentworth. I even like Ryan Rotier, if you know him from yeah, Buffalo. Yeah, I've Club. got him on Snapchat. He, yeah, he, he messages me quite a bit. Oh, yeah, he even there. come one time before, the year before that helped me. I took him down there, and we went to a couple, three days. He'd run camera, and we'd take turns. Yeah. he let me shoot a bit. But I just went down there by myself. I just went, and then I knew it had been getting called. All the neighbors are calling. Then they have local contests now, like, quite a bit. And on the ranch, there's guys calling. So it's, I knew it was going to be hard. But I went down there, and I just took my time. And a lot of it was I'd call. They'd answer. They wouldn't come, and I'd get closer. <laughs> Call again, they'd answer, have moved, get closer. And like some three or four times, then I get there, all of a sudden here they just come. Yep. Yeah, and I, I, I had most fun. That was just so much fun down there all by myself. And they didn't, they were too busy calving and stuff. Yeah. So that was just so much fun, just kind of like I used to do it. So I've been, that's what I've been doing, you know, last year. I'm going to go probably some, again, after our Iowa deal with Sean, I'm going to go start going a little more now and stuff, but. So is there a season for you then? Like that I and I don't, I mean there's not but for you Well, for, you know, I you, don't I really don't like to to call. I mean, it's just in me to call year round. Yep. I mean, it, Same they're, thing. they're so easy to call in the summertime. They're Same, so yep. easy, you know, and you can I would say when Primos we first started, they were all fired up and the, you know, their cameramen are always so busy. Elk in Colorado, they start hunting turkeys They're already hunting turkeys in Florida and all over, you know, and and so the cameramen were kind of freed up a couple. So they went up. We went up with Dave Tatum. <laughs> and we went up on that. It was a Wilder Ranch. I don't know if you ever heard of it. It's not anymore, but it was high fence, like 10,000 acres by Timber Lake. 
They had yeah. like 1,200 head of elk yep, in there, yep, 600 buffalo. Yep. Well, Dave was managing that. I got some stories. I Oh, you die laughing, but I won't tell them that. But, but Dave, it's some, oh, he's got some funny stuff. But anyways, uh, so we went up there. It was 105 degrees, end of July. I said, wow, this is so hot. And so we went up there, and you know, a lot of people, well, even now, that's one thing we never talk about, you know, People are scared to howl because they're going to scare off younger coyotes. That's just a farthest yeah. from the truth. Yep. And anyway, so. Um, like, but, but wait, without losing your chain of thought, yeah. what kind of howl? Any kind. It can be an older, an old male coyote. Just my, my, my best, one of my best serenades on, uh, on my, that I have for sale, it's called the Pup Serenade. A lot of guys have them on their Fox Pro. They have them on their Lucky Duck. You know, all, I mean, it's, uh. It's just me blowing the old hot dog. But. And two coyote pups come up there. It's called the Coyote Pup Serenade. And, they, oh, I did a low pitch. They, it's on a video. The hunt's on a video. They come up right there, and they, they howl and howl and howl and howl six yards away. And I had a kid with me. <laughs> and he's using these dad's Remington that's seized up, hasn't been oiled. Old Remington automatic. <laughs> and he can't get the sh- could to go off. I mean, he sounded like Ted Nugent. I haven't had words like that. I mean, he's like sixth grade, just cranking on that thing. So finally, they just walked off. Well, Randy, you think you can call them back in? Oh, probably not. I'll call me again. Here, I called another one up about 30 yards from the other direction. He missed it. did go off, and he missed it. But but that was, you know, and it happened so much. And, and on this trip, um, I would howl. We'd see pups and stuff, and I howled. All of them, we shot nine coyotes. And it was hot. Some of the pre- the footage Primos couldn't use because it was just heat oh, waves. So yeah. bad. Yeah. So I had, and these pups were at the end of July. So they're, you know, a little bigger. And uh, I howled all of them in except on, I used, call, I never used rabbit or nothing. And, you know, they, they would stop, I'd howl. Stop, I'd howl. They'd come up, shoot. Had them digging out. One dug out a prairie dog. Glenn Zink was with us. Hunk, you know, out there like, geez, 600, <laughs> 700 yards. Dug it out ate it and stuff hot i howled pup here it come all the way in and glenn zinc missed it got right up to the right up to us but but i mean uh and like oh you'll see i've seen i don't know who they are you see some on uh youtube a little bit are they from arkansas or somewhere some guys they they set they're kind of like you like me i know who you're talking muscly. about mfk guys mm. okay made for killing they do a lot of diaphragm but stuff. i see it's a lot it's warm the pup they're yep. small coyotes yeah but yep. they're they're howling them all in pretty much yep. i mean it seemed to me like yep that's they're what sitting they on a little stool yep. or something in yeah. the thick trees real thick tree yeah just haul them in yeah they're very easy to call in but yeah you no know, <laughs> but you're but i mean there's a certain point where a howl don't you think i mean in your opinion like a like an inter like not an interrogation a challenge howl like a a male challenge howl do you think that that would be overly aggressive for a coyote for a pup for a smaller coyote younger coyote no don't seem to be really no don't okay. seem to be okay so that'll I've tell guys yeah. my uh i'm not saying i don't i don't i don't do i don't do yeah. it so I, i'm just yeah i mean no it's like i've said uh i remember one time I was, this was in Alberta. I was sitting there and he was saying the same thing. Are you going to howl like even in these thick trees and stuff? This was in, I was in March, a lot of snow yet. And, uh, and I howled just, I mean, I never do howl soft. I howl like a kite. Would howl. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. and I howled like, and this was one of them, one howl and the brush just started moving with coyotes 30 yards away, right up to us. Right. I mean, me to you right there. It's on a video. I think we got one is all because they're just so thick. Yep. But that was, yeah, I mean, and, uh, oh, I mean, it's just, I got so, I just watched my video so many. Over and over and over. Pops over and over. Yeah, I mean, it's. Just from a. They're uh, they're curious. Yeah. They're curious. Yeah. And they may keep a little bit of distance. Well, they ain't going to come right up, but they might be, you know, a younger cut. Sometimes they'll circle a little bit, but shoot, they're within 200 yards usually or less. But, doable yeah, shot so are, are are you is are you do you see a, a a pattern in um like say a serenade versus a, a solo howl no can't I'll so, tell so you. This is some, there's guys that are like dude i get better i get way better results with coyotes answering or or coming in off of a dual pair off of a off of a, a serenade versus a soul a single howl okay and i'm like here's what? a deal in canada with woolly it's never the same like i said i don't care 
I was up there for, I usually hunted for four to four and a half days. And usually there's one day that's about can't, snowing or yep. bad wind, whatever. But the first day, let's see, how was it? The first day they would answer, and there might be two or three groups answering, but the one that would come in usually was not, had any, was none of them coyotes. Wasn't answering. No. Yep. So then, like a, the next day or so, they weren't, none of them were howling. Nothing was howling. Couldn't, and we were calling them in, still calling them in. So went back to some of them same places. And then the next day or two, whatever, every time I would howl, there'd be a serenade almost every time. It was crazy. Coyotes were coming on the run serenading. They were, you could see them, two or three of them, all howling on the runs, doing serenades. Like they can't get there fast enough. Every day was different. Yep. So, I mean, how do you predict? How do you know? You don't know. You can't. You got to be a coyote, and then why they maybe they don't even know. Yeah, it's <laughs> just God given. Yeah. I don't know. You, yeah, that's 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 crazy. That's why you do a little. That's why I do a little everything. Yep, I do a little single howl like in the old stage one. Sometimes I'll start with serenade. Yep, mix it up. Yep, yep. So and even you just like come we, running in. You pups be two pups. And you're doing like in early November. You're doing like a big old serenade loud and shoot within a minute. Sean Hyden was setting. Uh, this on a video. And uh, this hadn't been too long ago. We were sitting there, and uh, I had the alpha dog. I was kind of getting ready, like I was telling you, when I was by myself. And one after the second howl, get, it's, I'm filming, going around, to the right, like six yards, three of them on a trail, and the dead run right towards us, three pups. And I'm doing, wide open on it, just wide open, uh, volume-wise. Here they come, just right around the hill right to us. Yeah. I mean, it happens all the time. I mean, I just and, and see. Then the thing is, I think one thing uh, people don't give the howls enough time. I was talking about that. Yeah, and and uh, you just want to give them a chance. You know, I know it's a pain in the butt to sit there or some of you, but you know, and don't call all. You know, I'm waiting between howls. You know, especially when I'm by myself, I'm giving it at least two, three minutes, sometimes longer. You know, and what? And then when you howl, like an open, more open cut and depth, we just start glassing yeah. right away. You know, they're laying down. They usually a coyote, of course, coming in too. They always stop that ridge. They just come shooting over the ridge. They'll get up and they'll walk up the hill and they might sit down. Oh, I wonder who that is howling, you know. And so. Yeah, that's good. That's that's how it's done. And the 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 thing oh, I hear a lot of guys are like, oh, it's too loud. You're doing it too. You, yeah. you might do it too loud. But how does a coyote howl? How does yeah. it, I mean, most like of the I time, said, he yeah, that's a rip. Yeah. If, if you're, if a coyote sitting next, if there's a coyote where you are and he rips a, a howl off, it's going to make yeah. your ears ring. And I'm using electronic. I mean, and then I've had, I mean, I've got on videos like several times. I have a jackrabbit on her and the alpha dog on a trigger stick tripod like that high off the ground. Cause it's kind of windy or taller grass. I got a 100 volume. I mean, on an alpha dog, that's pretty loud. Jackrabbit. So, we're looking around, you know, and they're windy, and all of a sudden we look down, there's a coyote or a bobcat this far away looking at it. Yeah. And shoot it right there, and they don't, like, you know, some people. Yep. They're all, you know, it sounds good, but. but yeah. They ain't coming if they don't hear it. Yep. That's what I say. That's 100% right. Yep. What about decoys? Like, real quick, what, what's your. I've head? never used, you know, I'm no, I'm sure they work. Well, you can, Rick even. <laughs> not, not decoy dogs. Yeah, like, no, I'm talking. Okay, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, but Rick was with. Uh, before he's with Lucky Duck, uh, oh, I can't Edge maybe Edge. Decoy? Yeah, Edge by Expedite. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and the the boss kept telling Rick, he goes, "How come you don't?" Sh I think he's even with him. So, how come you don't? You jam them decoys clear down in the ground. You don't even hardly show them. And well, you want to get a coyote in or not? <laughs> so, so you know. And I think a lot of times they're coming to the decoy. It's just because they're coming so hard, and they don't even see it till they're like right on it. But I'm sure it helps some. But Rick just had, you know, he just didn't have that, I mean, having that good luck when the coyotes see it. Because what they usually do, you know, they'll, they'll hang up. Yep. They'll change their whole approach. Yep. Downwind right away. Yep. You know, I even had, I used to have, when I'm, I, I mean, Primos has decoys. Shoot, you know, I just never use them because I, if a coyote's going to get close enough to use a decoy, I mean, you're going to see him anyway. Yep. What do you need? I mean, you just, you know, turn the call. Down. I mean, what good, I mean, I can see where they work good on a bobcat. Get him to close that last, keep his focus off of you. But I don't know. I just never use it much. I had a taxidermy mount jackrabbit on a board 
with a, and a spring on her and a, and a, and a string on it. I could go out about 30, 40 yards. So I blow. You go, <laughs> Three or four times I'd call coyotes and they just hang about there and look. You know, I don't know. Yeah, it's just, it's not, it's like it's real, but it's not real enough for them. I don't you know. know. It's, and some of it's just odd, floppy stuff. But uh, I don't know. It's just, I think a lot of what you see on TV, it's just coyotes coming so hard. Then they do see them, they freak out, and they just go right to them, maybe. I don't know. Maybe they work, maybe they don't. I just never really mess with them. But, the, the, but a coyote decoy, I think, helps some. There you go. What yeah. about your coyote decoy that yeah, you Yeah, I've had? got that little, what do I call him, peewee. That, the, found him in, uh, in about the end Pond of June Pond. in the middle of Highway 12. And, uh, you found it, it Mount? Yeah. You found it, yeah. Mount? Yeah. No, I found it, and it was... Must have just got straddled by a semi, a little bump on his head. Oh, perfect. oh I got so you. So I was I working you. down by Glen Zinks, where I used to live, and I stopped. Can I throw this in your freezer? Ah, I don't care. So he threw it in there, and I had it taxidermy mounted. I kind of got it taxidermy mounted. He's kind of like this, <laughs> kind of like he's kind of, you know, a little weak or whatever. Yeah. And I don't know. He seems to work pretty good. Really? You take yeah. that with sometimes? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Especially like this time, like January on. Maybe when they're a little more pressure going. There's they, yeah, there's a, and then it helps too, I think. You know, like, uh, you know, if you have like shelter belt, like in the sand, there's shelter belts or tree groves. Of course, we got the greyhound guys too. Yep. Thermal guys, greyhound. Yep. We got trappers, you know, and they're pressured. And uh, just go to where you think they are, where they're hiding in a hay yard, just kind of isolated or, you know, a shelter belt group of trees here and there that's and, you know, just get in about as close as you can where you can shoot you know, within range, lay on your belly. and But you put that out there, you know, sometimes you're pretty exposed, you know. And, but you can usually get them to stick their head out of a shoulder belt, howling usually. Just wait and maybe a little pup distress or a little kai or something, you know, and then just shoot them when you see them. But that, their eyes, instead of you, they go right to that decoy. But I've had them just come just hard for that thing. I've had old males growl at them, jump over the top, you know, and just growl at them and everything. And so, that, yeah, they help, especially this time of year. Have you got some video of that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're on some of my videos. But, I, but you know, one thing, it's kind of like the other decoy. Sometimes when they first see them, they'll stop and hang up. Well, you can shoot them. I mean, <laughs> just shoot them, you know. And that's, but usually I never have that trouble when they're out. It's when they get about that 200 to the 100 yard they may stop and usually the guys that are with me i can't get them to hold off to see what they do they want to shoot them yeah, <laughs> just shoot. yeah. so hold off <laughs> yeah that's no, too late yeah. yeah that's interesting if yeah if you uh if you are if you want to go shoot some and we're not in the middle of cabin or something i got a camera and know how to run it i'll i'll gladly film some stuff i'd even drive down there yeah. that's not very far away if you have access to ground and you need a camera guy or something just to just for a day or two or something and get some footage one thing we haven't covered you know is yeah i was gonna say if you want to cover something because we're at 245 Jeez. so that's good though that's good all good we're if there's some down. hey we're just half <laughs> yeah, <No. laughs> yeah yeah if there's something that, that you want to that you want to touch okay. base on do it well Primos wanted me to do these expert hunts. They're on the turbo dog and the alpha dog. And I thought, wow, that's kind of what, you know, and it was, they had a good idea where it's just me. Like you're taking the commercial was, you can take Randy with you, you know, and I'm just doing a hunt. Like if I was sitting there and it's a breeding season or it's whatever. So I do it, you know, just a general hunt. I'll howl this, wait, do this 10 minute deal, whatever. Then go to prey sound, whatever. Then go to stage three. So I had, like six or seven of them called them expert hunts. All you do is push play, let the thing get your gun up. It's one contest. Some of the big contests in South Dakota were won by a guy. All he's using is my expert hunts. Crazy. North Dakota, guy won a contest. He called me. Some of them got second and third just by using my exercise. Couldn't believe it. So a lot of people want more of them. So that's another thing with these new callers. I'm designing more of them. Plus, we got some more new sounds. And plus, we're going to have, you can actually buy the expert hunts separate if you don't have them that aren't on the collar and stuff too. But uh, but anyways, so. Um, so it's a sound file. Huh? So it's a sound well, file. Well, it's just like, it's just like, uh, it's there's time in between. Like I'll howl, like three or four howls. Then I say, well, let's just wait two minutes. So they're just sitting there. Nothing's happening. So you just push play on the call. And you just push one time. Call sequence. It's and it's yeah. all secret. It, all and I designed to hunt all of them. I got you. Yeah. And I've got like, you know, 
that's going to be reading an op- one. I got the challenge ones. I got you know, then so them scenario things. You know, I was doing them. I've that's done them for idea. years. That's a good idea. That's it. Yeah. You know, I talked about answering with different, but I I do coyote fights. You know, years ago with because I I put a funnel on a tally ho like an oil funnel, yep. not a huge one. Then I would use the Austin Howler, and I sounded different. <laughs> And wait, I'm pretty soon. Sure. Usually, when the old male, especially this go, once or twice, get ready, he's coming. And sure enough, you can hear it on my video. So it's like, well, get ready, he's coming. You know, but so I, I would do that. So they're on these expert hunts too. So I do a lot of coyote challenge deals, which I think people need to do more of. You know, instead of just create a ed- scenario, especially as educated as everything, get and don't just lay off you know take take your time make it sound real and then then we haven't talked about the breeding deal and uh i know rick's got some really good i've heard a few of his my buddy huron's got you know the caller and some other that, that lucky duck callers about everywhere and again congratulations to rick you know that's quite a deal yeah and i would say my sounds like my real sounds that aren't me on the, the callers there's a few of me but they're actually dead coyotes i howled them in I did an interrogation. They answered me. I got it. They I howled. They howled. We're going back and forth, and we shoot them. Like, there's several serenades, like three coyotes. Uh, one would stay a mile and a half away. The other two come up. We killed them both. You know, and so these coyotes are, they're answering me, my sounds, every one of them except for only a couple, that we killed them because we're going back and forth. So, you know, when they're a captured coyote, I'm sure they're working. I mean, everybody says they are, but I mean, you know, they're, they're not like a coyote's off a ways, yep. but they're just in a cage from here to there. I know, I don't know, but I mean, I'm just saying my, my sounds are real coyotes. I've called in, they challenged me. I challenged them female invitations. I've, I've called in old males. I've called in females with you know the doing female invitations and stuff and then they're answering me and challenge howls old young all from pup coyotes up to adult males and adult females their challenge howls are i'm going back and forth with them then we should most of them are on the videos so uh, what do you do different during breeding season so breeding season you know and i don't know um you know, everybody was after what they used to call it on the chat boards, uh, estrus chirp you know yeah guys talking really about high that. yep little and yep. Then, yep and then uh you know, and oh, I've heard everybody say, "Boy, you know, I think I've heard that." You know, and they were, I don't know. <laughs> but anyways, I was going down the road. This was is it on my first video, the second. We're going over to his uncle to get permission. Naper, Nebraska. Going out not too far from Naper, west of Naper, and Glenn and I are going to his uncle. Going down his driveway, and here's it's on a video. It's on my ma- on my mastering yard videos too. And there's a bigger coyote chasing this smaller coyote around. It's in February. And round and round they go, and we stop. They're about 600 yards with some high lines right there above us. And I stop. I'm filming them. And I can hear this, beep, 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 like that, just like a bird or something. And I go, what in the world is that? Is there some bird on that high line? Well, no, it's them coyotes. You sure? Yeah. Beep, 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 beep. So I got that all recorded. I even made, designed a call. You can do that on. So the male was trying to breed her, I think, and she wasn't quite ready or didn't want, you know, or whatever. I don't know. But anyway, so that's why I just called it. So I made a call that way. And then, then what I do, I go, I do uh, the female invitations. Now, I grew up in Butte in town, but then I, I got married and I moved out on the Kip Hall River where most of my videos were made. I remember I shot one off, coyotes off my step, you know, three, 400 yards and, you know, the dog running out there and all that. That was all in the same spot, but it was kind of a coyote corridor. You've got them here, you know, yeah. where coyotes just travel, you know, and they like breeding on the ice. Dave Tatum told me that because when they were up, up on a plane and there's a little snow on the ice, you can see these figure eights, you know, and he, would, and he said that for some reason, they like to huh. they breed a lot on ice for some reason. Huh. I don't know. And like the Fort Randall Dam, you know, with the down there, when, when, it, when it ever does freeze up some of them winters, coyotes like all over. Guys are running snowball bills up, up and down that thing, you know, running coyotes down. So it must have something to do it. Or they're just crossing to new territory. But, but I will do the female invitation. I, I, I was lay, I'd lay in bed at night there when I lived down the river. And I'd hear these females, you know, from late January to February. And um, they just do the... 
little bark. Little, like for an hour, over and over and over and over. So I figured that must be a, f- a female inviting in a male. And I don't know if that's what it is. But anyway, so I, I record. I went to that studio in Norfolk, and I had the, a diaphragm call, and I did it. And that's one of the best. <laughs> you can ask most people. That's one of the best. It's not a real coyote. Just me doing it, mimicking, and it's one of the best ways to get one in. And you get it's the craziest thing. You'll get females in almost as much as males, and then you can get them in out of uh, mating season. Because I, I've, there's been times when I've been out, oh, October, November, when the pups are the you know when pups are kind of still with the the adults and everything. Yep. And I've actually, before I've sat down sometimes, or I've, I've done an interrogation call, I've heard that female do that same thing. That and then of- and I've seen pups like heading that way or coyotes heading her way. That's happened a couple, three times. So I think it's a, something they can kind of use for both. But I know in the mating time, as I've got it on, on my sounds, I go uh, in female invitation, mating, then I have just female invitation. So the female invitation mating is over and over and over and over. And then the other one's just more like an interrogation, only that female type of a sound, you know, for calling the pups in. And then I throw in more of a male howl. I'll switch to the hot dog. You know, and you like this way, that way. And, I mean, it just, it works pretty good, you know, during mating season. Then, of course, you can do the, then the, dee, 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 yep, dee, dee, little bit that of enter. chirps. That's kind of the expert sound that I've got. It's kind of a little bit like that so far. But. And you don't have that offered, right? I mean, it's going to, that, that expert sound list is going to be offered with. Well, it's on the, some of them are already been on the Alpha Dog and Turbo Dog for years. Oh, okay, I didn't but, know yeah, that. Yeah, they're on her. Yeah, like I said, uh, the guy's been winning contests. I couldn't believe I it. I got you. I didn't know that. one down there in uh, Kansas. Is it out of? Uh, A big contest. Yes. What's that town down there? Saint Manhattan. Fra- okay, okay, no. Or St. Fran, no, I think it was Manhattan. These guys were in it, and they were. They were even using the, my old sounds from my, when I had my Fox Pro sound. Yep. And I had this bird sound. I mean, this is just telling you, you don't need to have an actual real woodpecker. I was using Rick's Tweety. I was twirling my tongue. And the other guy, uh, he had a, I won't say what company, he had a caller. It was supposed to be pretty good. He was doing all the calling in the morning. Couldn't call Jack. So then he just, the other guy, he's actually a Primos guy, a rep. He told me, he said, I started putting on that bird sound. We killed, like, we, we got second in the contest. We killed seven in the afternoon. Wow. That's all I played. I didn't even howl or nothing. So it's just crazy, you know, how that works. But yeah, that's interesting. Maybe to hear it only too. worked that day. Maybe the yeah. next day it wouldn't work for yeah. a hill of beans, as Garland Anderson dad used to say. Not worth a hill of beans. <laughs> Uh, it, is there, is there some, anything else that you think that we didn't cover on your list? Uh, oh, probably. I don't know. I hate that, to keep looking at it, but no, I think. that's good. You got, you gave, that's some good info. I'm trying to think. Cause that's, I wanted to pick your brain on kind of your, your, the, the, how you, the, the duration of your sets, kind of how you opened them up, what you did throughout the sets, what you finished them off with. And I, you did good at, at explaining I would say. That. If I'm good at anything, like really, I think sometimes I have a knack of knowing what to do next, maybe. But when I'm inter, especially when I'm interacting with with coyotes, like some by it's never been with me before, and I howl and I hardly get out of my mouth. Roar! So I'll just go over there. Roar! You know, I can sound. I can just have a knack of sounding just like them, and it just freaks some people out, you know. And and I, I have a good ear because I was a music teacher, and yep. I can. I'm good at mimicking. Well, that's yeah. one thing we ever, you know. When you get them, the 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 ones doing, you know, you've done sets, and then the warning howl types, yep. and you'll walk clear to your next stand, get out, and you're like three quarters of a mile, and you can still hear that yep. coyote from your, the, still warning, well warning, warning. What really worked on them was I just mimic them, and then sometimes they'll get close enough. Just keep mim- doing what they're doing, and then maybe put on a little bit of soft pup distress or something like she'd be interested in. But... Uh, or do it on a call, that kayak call, and just do what she's doing. Ruff, 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 ruff. And I could just sound just like him. And uh, so I, then you, if you can, you send the guy, send him, just send him, get go get in a low spot, just go for that coyote. And I just keep him there. And they even come a little close. I just keep him there. And that, that really works. You'll see, uh, I was in Alberta with Gary Hausman, 
we shot a double, or we shot called two coyotes in, and the landowner and Gary got mixed up on which one they were shooting. They kind of crossed, and they both shot the same one. So the coyote got away and over the hill, and they started warning him, warning him. So I said, Gary, just come with me. We got there, and I had it in my mouth and the camera, and using the diaphragm, gets on video. So we get up, just crest the hill. We're, we're on our knees, camera. <laughs> and we get up there, and, and, and he shot the coyote. Never moved. But that's another good tactic. You know. That's yeah. yeah. Th that's something though that a lot of people won't go to the that extreme. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's not a there's a lot of me again. It is, but yeah. they'll, they'll. And your phone battery's gonna die too. Probably oh, pretty soon. It's been on low okay. power mode for right. a while. But All right. Well, just as a heads up to anyone on Facebook. Okay. Watching yeah. Randy, you can watch it maybe later tonight on YouTube. Yeah, I'll get it. I'm gonna get this up. I'm gonna get this the the audio up, and then it won't take me long to get the video too. Maybe if your phone's gonna die, you know what we could do? We could just shut your Instagram live off, my Facebook or your live. Facebook live. Sorry, and hammer out that song on the end. Just hold it on the microphone. Okay. Want to do that? You put a charger on it. I just. It'll probably play with that. It'll probably still roll through it. Okay, all right. I bet your. I bet your mics. Don't I bet you don't your, have it record. Oh, for just the. Yeah, just let. I'll let this. I'll let this podcast run, and that'll be the outro. All right. You just. I'll grab your phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was. Let me grab it real quick. Just let it run. Just let it run. Oh yeah. Well, what do you think, boys? You getting hungry? Good. I'm going home. So by Valentine, going by winter, I got to have me a blizzard. So, <laughs> so you're going to go through Valentine? I'll go through winter this time. Oh, I went. I had church in Valentine. Oh, I got you. I played, uh, I think I played bass guitar in, uh, during the worship service. You go to Valentine? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Here, it's, you know what? I'll let you do it. Dude, you what can am click I doing? Finish. finish. Is this Facebook right live yet? It's still rolling. There's still people. You probably have Well, folks, there's a lot of questions on here, and I probably don't know n nothing about them. I, I probably can't I, even answer a, them. A bunch of people said you couldn't hear it very well, but I told okay. them, I just commented and said, we'll be posting It'll be on YouTube. Okay, later. all right. If you can't hear it, it'll just... So what do I, I end the online deal now and go to my song? Is that what I'm doing? Yeah, that's okay. what James said. Okay, goodbye, folks. Thanks for watching. Randy Anderson, never give up, folks. Never give up. Okay, here we go. Music. My library under artists. Carrie Underwood. J let's see. Josh Turner. Kenny G. Louis Armstrong. <laughs> Oak Ridge Boys. Randy An Travis. Randy Travis. And here's Randy Anderson. Okay, calling all coyotes. Uh, and also, let me, before you push play, uh, I'm going to say uh, we had an awesome podcast today. It's This is the longest podcast by far with probably the most, with the most information by far. We had Randy Anderson. Uh, we're humbled to have him here with us and give his expertise on on a subject he knows way more about than us. So it's it's awesome for us to be able to, to grasp and, and get that information out to our listeners. Uh, and I'm going to start filming some stuff for him too. He said he's going to have me film some stuff for him. I am going to work on my guns. There you go. We got it down. We're afterwards. We'll wear a short sleeve next time. <laughs> yep. All right. Go for it. That's we'll, we'll end it with your, with your song. Okay. And I'm ready to go. Go for it. It was on, I used to play it on the winter radio station. Sometimes just call up during cut season. Hey, do you got that Randy Anderson song? And he's played on Valentine. He's played on O'Neill, Ainsworth. Yeah. So they could still play it. I don't know, but it's, of course, it's not. This is in a hippie's basement in 1990 it's not that something. Version. Huh? The version they it's, have no, it's this version. Oh, it's it just, is. you know, the quality. They probably were going to be digital or whatever. But here we go. Whoop.
send an old dog this way, and I pray he knows it's sin to come in down with. Everybody now. So come, little coyote, come. The banquet table's ready. I've got rabbit, mouse, turkey, and venison. Come, little coyote, come. I'm just sitting here and waiting. I've got Browning Night, Weatherby, and Bennington. Just silhouette yourself. About 30 yards or so, and I'll let her go. Just silhouette yourself about 30 yards or so. I'll let her go. That was good. All right. That's it. That's it, folks. That's all she wrote. So all I I'm gonna all hit I'll shut the record off and if there's there were I need a nap, you know I am <clears throat> a senior citizen. I'm on the Medicare now. You don't look like it though. You look good. Sixty, I'll be sixty seven here before I know it. That's that's uh <clears throat> that's good. I'm glad to see guys like you that are still doing what you're doing. That gives me motivation to not die before I'm forty five. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh <clears throat> all right. I'm gonna I'm going to mute you out, and I'm going to 